It's December 7th, 2023. Welcome to episode 301 of Rock. I'm Gian Gomeshi. Hello to you from Toronto, Canada. Salam dustan aziz, durur bashoma. Hope you're doing well wherever you are tuning in from around the world. You know, this program was never started with the intention of being political or controversial. When we launched three and a half years ago, it was about finding and examining and sharing the stories of Iranians, particularly in the diaspora, those living outside of Iran. And of course, we still take pride in being independent and nonpartisan or party affiliated or beholden to any particular interest. But the task of only addressing cultural or social topics and conversations that will not tweak anyone's sensitivities or sensibilities has proven mostly impossible. That That is, as hard as we may try to do an Iranian-focused program that does not only traffic in sadness or negativity or collective trauma, to keep it real, it's simply not possible to present sunlight when it's a gloomy day. And we are, after all, talking about a global Iranian population who've been through war and displacement and suppression and a great deal of loss. And so today we want to tackle something that will probably not be appreciated or loved by everyone in the audience. You know, having a conversation or debate about anything to do with religion is challenging at the best of times, but doing so in the middle of a polarizing global climate amidst a polarizing Middle Eastern war is not without its hardships for sure. That said, it's too interesting a moment for us to ignore. So, to wit, we may all agree that there is, on the one hand, the war that is happening between Israel and Hamas right now. That's clear. But then at the same time, there are the social and cultural implications around the world of that conflict and how it is resonating in all sorts of problematic ways, to say the least. For example, many have credibly shown that we are now, sadly, living in a period of an upswing in anti-Semitism. That surely is a problem. At the same time, there's been a lot of concern, as articulated by governments and media and all kinds of social groups and social media warriors, about Islamophobia and the rise of that. Islamophobia is defined by Dictionary.com as the fear of, hatred of, or prejudice against the religion of Islam or Muslims in general, especially when seen as a geopolitical force or a source of terrorism. Islamophobia would also be a major problem, one would have to say, right? Well, it gets more complicated, you might say, in the Iranian case. What if we were to put the proposition forward that Islamophobia is possibly, sometimes, understandable? Or more specifically, what if we directly ask the question, is Iranian Islamophobia sometimes justified? Well, on some level, it seems absurd. Right? Why would any thinking person believe that there is anything justifiable at all about discrimination against a religion or those practicing it? And in fact, if some folks just look at the title of today's episode and don't actually listen to the nuanced conversation I hope we are about to have, they may have a reflexive negative reaction like Islamophobia justified. You want to make an argument for racism? Well, no. Look, If, say, an average American in Kansas, who has had little interaction with Muslims in their life, sees a group of Muslims praying or a woman in a hijab or a mosque and suggests that they hate that group of Muslims or worse, want to deport them, attack them, ridicule them, ban them, you get the idea. Surely that is a dangerous and unjustified form of discrimination and indeed something that many of us may have had to deal with in our lifetimes. But here's a thought experiment. What if we're now talking about a 20-something woman who has recently come from Iran, and this person feels their teenage years were stolen from them as they did not have the basic freedoms of their Western counterparts? And what if this woman says her life has been suppressed and oppressed from what she's allowed to do to what she's allowed to wear by a system and regime that purports to be doing all of that because of Islam? 
Let's say she knows a woman who's lost an eye at the hands of the same regime, or that she has a brother who's been imprisoned for being gay, or a kid who's been killed in a demonstration for democracy. Then, if this Iranian woman has a fear or prejudice against the religion of Islam, is it not, at least on some level, whether right or wrong, understandable? You see, that's not a fictional example. I happen to know the person I'm describing and a number of other Iranians whose sentiments are not dissimilar to hers. Hell, there are some folks who will make the case that Islamophobia as a concept needs to be reevaluated. Like, is it even a thing or a creation of those who want to victimize Muslims? At the very least, this is a complicated question for Iranians and perhaps worth a conversation. Again, not assessing necessarily the merits of any particular religion against another, but the implications of growing up in a place known as the Islamic Republic and being traumatized as a result. Right now, there's a debate in social media whereby some people are accusing some Iranian women of being Islamophobic, and those Iranian women are claiming that even if they are, they have good reason to be. So let's put the question to the roundtable. That's coming up on this edition, plus a feature interview with an icon of Iranian law and history of over the last half century. She is a prominent attorney, author, activist, and professor dedicated to advancing democracy and human rights. And she was one of the first female attorneys to oppose the Islamization of gender relations following the Islamic Revolution in 1979. Mehrangiza Kar joins me in the Rook studio for a feature interview. All right. Really good to have you with us. This is episode 301. Let's get started. This is Rook. Here we go with episode 301, Merhangisa Kar. Join me in the Rook studio in a little while. But first, let us get this roundtable started. She is our regular Rook Roundup specialist and a producer for us here, and the former president of the Iranian Students <laughs> Students Association at York University. See, I think I only care about that. <laughs> and perhaps some Rook, uh, some uh, York activists. Yes. Uh, Pega Ganji, Smart Pega, hello. Hello. Uh, she is a, I mean, but it is a distinction of yours, it is it not? Is. A it absolutely president is. President of the Iranian Students Association, even if there were only you, 30 Iranians. I was going to say, you're dredging up some memories, <laughs> some good and some not so good. So. Oh, well, that's an episode. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she's an Iranian-Canadian marketing strategist, designer, media observer here in the studio, Raha Ru. Hi, hi, hi. Resonant Raha, hello to you. And he is an Iranian-Canadian engineer and YouTuber based in Toronto. His YouTube channel, under his own name, focuses on language and culture and has grown to be one of the most popular channels in the world with millions of views here in the Rook studio again, Bahador Alast. Hello. Hello, happy to be with you. Happy to have you back here. How are you recovering from last week's roundtable? <laughs> just, just still thinking about things that I could have or should have or shouldn't have said. But. Indeed, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. Well, we're going from um, from a very serious topic last week to uh, to a simple and easy one, <laughs> from executions to religion. Say, you're gonna yeah. have lots to think about after this round table for sure. Um, I mean, how did you feel when I was doing the introduction there about talking about this? Is Iranian Islamophobia, in other words, Islamophobia, if we believe it as uh, the concept, it, it, when it is exhibited by Iranians, is it sometimes somehow justified and or understandable? What was it like when you when you realized you're you're in for this topic, Pega? Are we going straight to our answer? Should no, I, I mean I'm right I'm, 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 I'm trying to warm us up by <laughs> just talking about talking about it. Um, I, when I was listening to you, actually, I, my mind was going through to different places, honestly. And, and I know this is a very nuanced topic. Now, I personally have a very black and white answer for it, but... Excellent. But I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's That's what we want. Let the games begin. Yeah. Um, no, but, but I understand. I understand that there's many viewpoints when we're talking about this topic, especially for Iranians. Yeah. And it's been interesting uh, as we've been leading up to this episode, just canvassing some opinion. Mm -hmm. And if the hypothesis, hypothesis is that some Iranians... I mean, not that we needed to... 
ask this, you know, necessarily of those around us who kind of know this, but that some Iranians feel so um, egregious, so 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 traumatized mm-hmm. by what has happened in their experience in in Iran that that they that that lingering taste is about Islam. Mm-hmm. Um, that is certainly out there. Yes. It's certainly out there. So it, it, it's it's an interesting question to 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 put out there. So let let me start with um, um, with when I was giving the thought experiment example of the 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 young woman from Iran, and this is you know it's, it's, I was saying think there's people I know that are are, are living this. Um, I suggested that that could be understandable. Bahador, do you think it is? Well. I, I believe that you first have to look at the term Islamophobia because this term by itself is uh, can mean different things depending on who you talk to. Uh, some people just use the term Islamophobia to uh, shut down any form of criticism or questioning of the religion of Islam. Um, some people use the term to refer to as bigotry or hatred towards Muslim people. So it, it really varies depending on how um, uh, like I said, depending on who you talk to, uh, if you well, what if we take that de- definition that I gave in the introduction? Do you want me to if say if we it are again? talking about people who have lived under the Islamic Republic and have witnessed crimes committed by that regime in the name of Islam, uh, using specific passages, verses, parts of the religion? in order to commit those crimes. And these people then grow up to become very critical of that religion and Islamic law, then of course it's justified. Uh, who are we to, you know, sitting in a free country where we're able to do and say whatever we want, question them and say, no, you have no right to say that. Then the fear or hatred or discrimination against all Muslims no. is justified. No, 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 that's not what I said. I well, said, you st- I mean, no, if I'm That's saying, what Islamophobia no, is. No, but see, that's what, I, that's what I meant by how people define How term. do you define it? Uh, I don't even use the term. <laughs> I, I well, that's, because, that's not helpful for no, this roundtable. No, but, but I'll tell you why. All because right. because the, I, I refer, if I want if I want to talk about hatred towards Muslims, I call that anti-Muslim bigotry racism, or hatred, sure, race, right, right. not racism, not because racism, it's right, not right. racist. Uh, I call that uh, you know hatred or bigotry or prejudice or whatever you want to. So call you that. reject the term. I do. I I don't like the term because it, the the term suggests irrational fear of a religion. But okay. All right. Well, I might come back on that, but that's interesting. So, so uh, if you were to accept the term, okay, if I were to accept the term, w- uh, but you, it sounds like you clearly think it's understandable in the case of the the example I gave, or other Iranians. If, that they if w- I accept the term, mm-hmm. and we can, for the sake of argument, mm-hmm. say that the term means hatred for people who practice the Islamic faith, mm-hmm. I disagree with that. No, that's not justified. That's not just no. It's not no, no, no. Because look, I, I mean, I, as somebody like myself who comes from a very so religious, what, what, what was justified a moment ago? Uh, you justified said? is, and and I and I'm not just talking about Islam. Any religion, any ideology should be open to criticism. If people are uh, uh, don't agree with certain parts of it, they should be able to criticize it. They should be able to openly talk about it and not be threatened or told that they're not is allowed. Is the hatred to. component? Understandable, if we use that word instead of justified, if uh, for for an Iranian, uh, it's not justified, but I can definitely understand. Okay. Why? Okay. Raho. Absolutely. Absolutely. What? Absolutely. It it is totally understandable. It is not justified when we define Islamophobia as acts of discrimination um, m- made towards people who who believe in Islam. No, I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that towards any religion. Um, but is it understandable that someone like myself who was raised under that regime, who, had, who, who was deprived of their, um, of their most basic right in, in many aspects, if I have hatred towards, towards a, a group of people that I can deem as the same people that have done that to me, it's totally understandable. Why is it not understandable? Could you... Could you, uh, could you possibly love someone who who has discriminated you if it's so, so, so would you go so far as to say you are islamophobic 
Um, I have to go back to what Bahadur said and, and ask you, what do you mean by Islamophobic? Am I going to go into, like, you know, that lady who was whose video went viral, mm-hmm. who was wearing the chador, like the full on hijab and everything. When I saw that, I was triggered. I'm not going to lie. I didn't like it. I was like, why did we even come here if these people are going to start flooding the streets? And I was angry. But, but if, I was if angry the, if, in if the, the, the... If the definition, the, uh, forgive me for cutting you there, if the definition is, as I was giving it from my dictionary.com, the fear of, hatred of, or prejudice against the religion of, is, of Islam or Muslims, it sounds like you're, you fall in that category. Yeah, okay. then yes. If we are defining Islamophobia as that, then I'm, I am... I go under that umbrella. And because of your experiences in Iran? Personal. Personal. Not, I don't, it's not someone I know. Uh It's me who has gone through those experiences that have made me who I am today with the beliefs that I come with, right? Mm. And I am. I don't like seeing uh, many things. I don't like seeing many rituals being played out by Muslims because it's triggering to me because you can call it a PTSD even mm. like a, you know po- mm-hmm. post trauma trauma yeah, yeah, yeah. behavior yeah so uh, I, w- I want to actually um, dig into if, if if you'll do it a, a, a little bit about what you're actually talking For about sure. in a moment but mm-hmm. let's just go to Pega uh, go ahead Pega what's your reaction to to this um so like I said I have because a very I sense <laughs> it's different based on the look on oh, your face yes yes it is um so here's the thing. I, I think it's really important, especially in an Iranian context, to distinguish between the criticism of a political regime and Islamophobia. So I know we're dissecting the word and whatnot, but because we are talking about Iranians, I mean, we're all Iranians here, I think that's really specific because I personally think that a lot of Iranians who grew up under the Islamic regime have this PTSD, like Raha said. They, they have this personal... Um, it's like you've been so affected by it that you can't think objectively when it comes to something like the term Islamophobia. I think criticizing the actions of a government, such as the Iranian regime, is very different than unfairly generalizing and discriminating against an entire religion. So that's my stance on it, and that's why I think it's absolutely not justified. Well, when the actions of the government are based specifically on the religion, mm-hmm. specific passages from the Quran, and let's be, you know, I don't want to get too specific and explain the religion of Islam, but Shias and Sunnis have different hadiths, but using the Shia hadiths specifically, sayings of the 12 Shia imams, however you want to refer to it, those are used in order to come up with these laws mm-hmm. and these discriminatory ways of this regime. You can't say that this is not the religion. Because it is part of the religion. But you can. Because what you're saying is that it's the usage of the religion by the regime. So that's actually called politicizing a religion. So whether it's Islam I- or Islam Christianity. Islam is a very political religion. Yeah. It, right. It's, but it's, it Islam is. at its core is a mm-hmm. political religion. Mm-hmm. And, and you can't say that about all religions. Because not all religions are political. Well, I'm not going to dissect the religion. But I, what I will say is that when you use something as a tool, you're politicizing it. So whether it's I'm using a religion right, but, or if I'm using. But, but you can't say that they're misinterpreting chewing it. Chewing gum, for example. Why not? It doesn't matter. Matter. Are religions not open to interpretation? No, they are. But but th- th- when they s- when people say you're misinterpreting the religion, they're trying to say that this is not what the religion says. But this isn't Islam practiced in different ways in different parts of the world? Uh, it is, but look. So uh, then there isn't one interpretation. No, right? Yeah, th- but that but I mean some things are very quite clear. Yeah. You know, somebody can't come and say in my version of Islam, I don't believe in God. You can't say that because that, that, that right. sounds that sounds ridiculous. Yes. So there are th- certain things which are very clear about Islam, and you know, you know, some guy who's you know never really even read the Quran, lives in the West, is a very nice guy. You know, he says he's Muslim, gets a little religious during Ramadan, and everyone's like, oh, he's a great example of good Muslim, uh, a good Muslim, right? And look, honestly, I, I don't have any hatred towards Muslim people. Like Muslims are my own family, relatives, friends, right? All I'm saying is. If somebody is actually, um, uh, you know, what they care about is the image of Islam, you know, they, w- they want to reduce hatred towards Muslims, they shouldn't be picking on Iranian people. They should be picking on the regime that is occupying the country of Iran, mm-hmm. right? They are the ones who are causing But people. it does sound like you're blaming the religion for the regime. No, I'm saying that you can't say that the religion has no fault here. No, but that, that's, I think that's, 
sorry, not to cut you off, but I think the question that we're referring to, you know, is Iran is Iranian Islamophobia sometimes justified, yes or no? I think that's very different than than what you're jumping into. You're talking about, you know, the justifications that potentially the Islamic Republic uses based on Islam to do what it is that they're right. doing. What we're talking about here, I think that's what the question was, is, you know, are Iranians justified in saying that it's okay to be Islamophobic? I'm saying it's okay for no, the, no, not that it's okay to be, but that they are, or fact. that they are, yeah. yeah. But I don't understand how that's different from what Bahadur well, is talking about. I, I think Bahadur is looking at the specifics of the fact that Islam as a religion has some faults, and therefore, if the Islamic Republic is using it, but it all ties then, in yeah. together. If you're saying it Islamophobia, how can you not dissect Islam because Look you're up. saying Islamophobia? But I think the Islam that we're all talking about is the Islam that you know you lived under under the Islamic Republic. No, yeah. Not specifically, Just no. Islam no. as a whole. Islam, Islam as a religion, as as what what is. It is stated in the Quran what is stated as part mm-hmm. of the traditions of Islam mm-hmm. the history of Islam yeah. how Islam even spread how it entered the country of Iran you know it took three centuries for Iran to become a Muslim majority mm-hmm. right so I, I, I'm using this as an example because sometimes a lot of Iranians will come to Western people and say oh you're too naive you don't understand the threat of what's going to happen to your country in the future and they're like oh you're a bigot you know you're racist you're Islamophobic it took 300 years for Iran to become a Muslim majority country. Um, honestly, at the rate we're going, some European countries will become Muslim majority in much in a much shorter period of time. Again, I, I don't want to say these things and people are like, oh, you're so racist, you're so against Islam and Muslims. No, but, this is, this is the reality, right? What, what, I, what, okay, wait a but, second. But you want, do you don't understand why somebody might say that to what you're saying? No, because... Be, because, be, you, because, because how many Muslims are there in the world? 1.5 billion. D- depend, you. Depends on how you. you define Muslim, right? Oh, okay. That's another thing. Now we right? don't know how to define no, Muslim. Be, no, no, right, be, no. Because, because people will over exaggerate the number when it fits their, their you know, suit system, right? That's the low estimate. But then a lot uh, of. At least a billion? Okay, let, let's say billion. But how right. many. Uh, well, you, and, and how many of them are, are practicing Muslims who well, have studied that's exactly. religion that's inside? I mean, isn't that, but, but isn't that part of the point? I mean, in other words, you if you. I'm, once again, let's carry the thought yeah, experiment. I'm, 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 I will take you on and, okay, and okay, say, look. okay. So under, if if you're right, mm-hmm. then we should cast all Muslims with no, one. No no no, 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 no. But you're but you're saying the problem is endemic in the religion. Yeah. It can't, if that, it can't if that, be both ways. That's, if, that's if that's the, what it is, I'm saying yes to that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well. 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 Then. I, 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 mean, I, I mean, that's problematic, isn't it? Because I, I mean, so everyone who's follow, a follower of, of Islam is is misled. Not. Mm, okay. As you said, people can have uh, different interpretations. But to my knowledge, whoever has gone in and dug up what it what Islam really is. They've either made up their own version of it, and I'm not talking about cults or groups of like, like um, ways of different thinking about Islam and you know all that stuff. I'm talking about Islam as a core. Yes. Okay. You're, we have at our table the, some someone who was a practicing Muslim and has. Yes, I'm not comfortable it, debating know. Islam. I'm not. Why? I'm not no, no, schooled no, I, in I, it, I, and, I, I, and I and it's too. No, I'm. I'm. T- I'm just. I'm okay, telling yeah. you. I think that's going to be a very difficult conversation to have because I would rather bring scholars mm-hmm. and, and religious experts and people who, mm-hmm. may, uh, like yourself, you, you, you seem to know a lot more than say. I, but this this question about Islamophobia, however, mm-hmm. I do have a sense of that, and I do have a sense of how both how it's being used, but also the reality of it. I mean, no, when you no. say it's not a term that you accept. Yeah, because the reason I don't accept it is because a lot of times it's used as, as, a, as a weapon, right? As, as, as a way to shut people down who have legitimate I think concerns, that's true. I think that's right? true, but I also, I also think that you, you risk uh, obscuring or, or, um, or, or not, not recognizing the reality that for many people in the world, say here in North America, probably here in Toronto, mm-hmm. All of these things are conflated, Iranian, Arab, Muslim, what, and used as tools of discrimination. And but to I, say, um, and to expect everybody to have the, the nuances down, to know exactly what they mean when they're, when they're discriminating you, you, against no, but somebody. But you can't say that about me. I, I, look, 
I go everywhere and people assume I'm Muslim, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's at the airport, whether I'm traveling, whether I'm walking to a, a clinic or something. It is, you know, so I, I experience that myself. Okay. So it's not like. You but, can, but, but, but then you it's a thing. Then it's a thing. The reality. Oh, no, but sorry, I'm going to jump in for a second. The reality is that. Islamophobia as a whole, whether we define it in one way or another as Iranians, as non-Iranians, whatever it is, it contributes to negative stereotypes. It contributes to discrimination. It contributes to harming innocent individuals who have no control I don't think over Islamophobia their, their, their government that. I, and what the government no, I, is I, doing I, in the I name think, of Islam. I think specific uh, governments, specific mm -hmm. groups, mm. Uh, specific individuals who do things under in the name of Islam mm -hmm. cause a lot more harm to the religion than right. somebody who just happens to as you say is be Islamophobic right, right? Mm -hmm. they are the ones who are causing the harm mm -hmm. so so it, you know if you are if somebody is a practicing Muslim who is concerned about the image of their religion or um, how Muslims are perceived uh, for them to go and pick on somebody who is criticizing the religion it, it, to me it's ridiculous they should be going after sometimes it's it's they themselves the people who are always shouting about islamophobia mm -hmm. are the ones who are making the uh, harming the image of islam they are the ones their actions their words are harming the image of islam and and muslim people and they have the audacity to come and call somebody who suffered for 30 years of her life was, was lashed was tortured in prison while passages from the quran were being read out loud and criticizes her and say, you are the one Who's causing Islam? But they, but this the, is what I have a problem with. But, right? the re but the response to that would be, one of the reasons you came to this part of the world is because you appreciate the freedom of, of expression, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. A freedom of assembly, freedom of uh, you sure, know, that. a speech. It's a, so so th those people who are shouting in the streets that you may not like it, but you respect that they have the. Freedom I'm not. Of I that. don't want to take the right away to do that. Okay. I, but I'm saying that they are the ones who are causing people to hate Islam more than the ones that they accuse. Yeah, but I don't think it's about who's causing what. I think the, the argument, or at least the argument that I will personally make, is that, you know, like Gian just mentioned, you, for example, or me or everyone at this table and our families included, we came to a country like Canada to mm -hmm. be able to live in a place where someone who's Muslim, someone who's you know Jewish someone who's a Christian we can all exist in the same place and freely express our opinions have the freedom to um, to follow our religion that. and all of these things right but the thing is that when you pinpoint things like Islamophobia and say oh it's justified and I don't mean you I'm just saying a collective you when you say that then you're contributing to what actually takes away from that ability I didn't to say, coexist I didn't say it's, it's not again. justified I'm not it's saying it's justified I'm not There's saying I, I, hatred towards Muslim people is mm -hmm. never Never justified, in my opinion. So please, let's mm -hmm. let's get that clear. Like I, I don't I don't want to be but accused. But that's the of definition of Islamophobia. No, 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 no. <laughs> that that see. That's one definition. That's well, exactly. one definition. I, I, fear, I fear was in there, and fear. I think fear is and criticism criticism definitely. of the religion. That was that was uh, the, you know so so for example when a, a Western government that you know where you live in a free society you're able to say what you want comes out and says in our parliament we're going to pass a bill that uh, will um, you know make it criminalize uh, criticizing or saying uh, saying something towards a religion like it's going towards that path and I think that's problematic mm -hmm. if, if if it's saying that you know we're I mean it's already criminalized you, you, you can't harm people because of their religion you don't you don't Absolutely. need a bill for that but to me it's problematic when you want to shut people down and say and I'm not only talking about Islam this is uh, uh, comes to other religions too they should be open to criticism Pat, Absolutely. It, it, yeah. I mean do you well, I use the example of the um, there's women in social media right now. They, mm -hmm. There was a, something that happened over the last yeah. couple of weeks where there was a lot of debate around because certain people were being targeted, Iranian women, mm -hmm. women in particular, it seemed, yes. uh, and, and being told, you know, you are Islamophobic. It seemed like for a gamut of reasons, including not necessarily supporting the Palestinian cause mm -hmm. or, or whatever, but the reaction of some of those women w w was to say, are you kidding? You know, we grew up in <laughs> in the Islamic Republic, yeah. uh, and you're sitting in uh, Georgia, and you know, um, attacking me. You know, mm -hmm. for uh, what? What? What do you make of that? I mean, if you if you 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 don't seem to see this as a problem uh, the same way that that Raho and Bahadur do. So, isn't that an issue for 
Iranians? Mm -hmm. See, the issue that I have with that is that um, I think the individuals who were calling these Iranian females Islamophobic and the Iranians who lived under the regime, the two of them have very different understandings of Islamophobia. And the reason I say that is the exact same thing that I started off my answer with at the beginning when you posed your question is that I think that it's really important to distinguish between criticism of a political regime that uses Islam as a tool to, you know, take control of the masses, mm. if you will, Islamic Republic. Textbook definition is the Islamic Republic versus Islamophobia in the manner in which I've experienced it. As an Iranian woman who's lived in Canada pretty much my whole life, I was never, you know, living under the Islamic regime or not to an extent that I remember. I mean, I was five when I left Iran. And yet I've had people here in Canada target me because of the fact that you know, my name is Pega, my grandmother wore a hijab and things like that. So when I have, you know, kids, when I was in elementary school, my grandmother would come pick me up and then kids would turn around and say, oh, you're a terrorist family. That's Islamophobia. But just for the sheer fact that my grandmother would pick me up from, from well, school. Well, technically they don't, is because or, well, you're a Muslim? Not, I mean, it could be because you're Middle Eastern or you yeah. have brown skin or it could be no, all No, but it, it's as a result of the fact, how did they know that? That never came up until my grandmother picked me up from school one day wearing a hijab. That's exactly where it, where it was rooted. Mm. So that's what I have a problem with. Well, I, I'm sure we all have a problem with that. I mean, that, that, that's not that's not that's not that's not justified. That's not justified. That's at not all. justified at yeah. all. But can I not be fear someone um, whom I described earlier? Like if if I see someone triggering. Mm -hmm. Because one day I was beaten up in school by the same looking person, is it not okay for me to be f to fear that no, person? I well, think, well, I think some would say no. Being okay is different. Well, some would no, say it's not okay it, because because say if you're having that reaction to um, a woman who's wearing a hijab in the subway, who's chosen that her religion and to wear the hijab, then your reaction to her would seem unfair, mm -hmm. would it not? Well, we're human and we are, we're allowed to have different emotions and feel and if i just if i fear that person and i and i change where i where i'm sitting why is that wrong if i haven't if, if, I, if i haven't um, can, can i tell you this might be a weird question but if there was a white person saying i fear that person who's wearing a hijab because those people bomb our buildings what would you say i would say move away and and do what you need not to fear that person why is it wrong if I if I'm if I'm fearing someone who has caused me the the, the a, a, a type of person who has caused me discomfort in the past? A type of yeah, person, because like like not not a type of okay. person, but like right. you right. know what? Right. I want I want to add to Rahul's point here because uh, I'm not going to just uh, judge anybody based on their appearance. Mm. I, I never do that. Uh, but if, for example. Uh, I see somebody. You're not going to talk about my looks, right? <laughs> <laughs> if the large nose yeah. is that. If I see someone with an extraordinary large nose, like. but but the, but my point is, uh, if you know here in, in North America, I see somebody who uh, you know based on, let's say something they're they're got wrapped around their arms or something, or or um, you know that they support the Islamic Republic. Mm -hmm. You know they they stand with that regime. There are people who go on the parliament holding pictures of Khamenei and they're not Iranian, right? So uh, they, they, are, they associate themselves with that ideology. And these people have a group in Canada. They have a group. They have you know, many members. Yeah. And uh, we, have, we have no reason to, to dislike them. or No, or no I, I, I'm actually I, glad you brought that uh, up yeah. because one, I really wanted to have this conversation because honestly, I don't, I don't hear a lot. Of, I mean, m social media spats between people uh, out there uh, accepted. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this. This is something that I, I've been talking about for the last two months. When I talk about Abdullah Hyun going on CNN and saying, yay, free Palestine, and a bunch of campus activists who don't know better going, oh, that's, that's our ally. Mm -hmm. No, the Islamic Republic of Iran regime is not your ally, you know? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. but that lack of education and that that... That, that puts Iranians right. in a very weird position. And especially if Iranians want to be, for example, mm -hmm. sympathetic to, or um, uh, if their heart is aching for what's happening in Gaza, or they want to take a pro-Palestinian position, how are we supposed to, how is someone supposed to grapple with the fact, you just mentioned it, today I saw this photo of pro-Palestinian demonstrators in Ottawa, capital of Canada, right, mm -hmm. with placards, celebrating Khomeini yeah. and, and Khomeini yeah. and you kind of go 
What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Exactly. That what? triggered you even. Like, of how course that triggers me. Exactly. Of course. It's, it, it's yeah. fearful. Like, so, so then for someone who has lived under the regime like myself, who's gone to school with the ideology, how, why am I not allowed to this is criticize that ideology exactly. specifically? A, being able to criticize Well, the if you believe it's an, it, it is, I mean, that's interesting. Because you're calling a religion an ideology. Yeah. No, because because Mepega just said you you can criticize the regime, but you can't criticize that religion, um, which is an idea. You use the word ideology for it. No, so I'm I, saying, why can't I criticize that religion as an ideology? Look, I mean, let's let, let, well, let, let Pega actually. Yeah, sure. she's go, been ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, what I was gonna say is again, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to keep you know beating a dead horse, but this is exactly, I think, the the most important part of this conversation. And this is what I've been saying to a lot of Iranian friends, a lot of Iranian friends who, you know, are are dear friends of mine, even family members of mine who grew up under the Islamic Republic. I think that unfortunately, and I'm only talking about Iranians and no one else, but we all, some of us have these blinders on when it comes to talking about Islam because we think it's synonymous. We think that Islam and the Islamic Republic are synonymous. And, and that's the part that I have a problem with because at its core, I think, you know, it's best to focus on the Islamic Republic as the evil we all know nobody likes the islamic republic you know we're all on the same page but i don't think it's right to paint 1.5 billion people with the same paintbrush because no, i no come from not. a country no, let, me, let me finish let me finish because i come from a country that i have you know ptsd from for being taught a certain thing in a way in a school or whatever else i think if i see a picture of Khamenei and you know on a placard in ottawa is very different than me saying if i sit down on a subway next to someone wearing a hijab i feel like a certain way that that's the differentiation that's what i'm trying to point out here. yeah but that i'm, I'm not disagreeing with yeah. you on that but you know the part that i disagree with you is when you say uh, separate yeah that that you Islam. say like as if the Islamic Republic just came up with all of these things yeah. by itself but it, it doesn't matter so the point no 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 hold does. on I want to I want to make my point very clear because I, I, I just want every, anybody who's who's listening mm -hmm. uh, I, I can use you know yourself Shion I come from a very religious Muslim family yes. probably among the most religious families in Iran um, I don't I don't want to go into detail but I have ahuns as uncles right mm -hmm. and my aunts all hijab or some of them chadris right this is this is my family, right? Do I do I hate these people? Of course I don't hate them. Mm -hmm. Do I disagree with them? Of course I disagree with a lot mm -hmm. of their their beliefs. And it, the, the the notion that, um, you know, at the very core, their belief system uh, hates me mm -hmm. because I mm -hmm. uh, was a former. I'm a former Muslim. I, I used to be religious. I left the religion. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, painted as this evil person, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have an issue with that, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fighting against them for that, right? And that's, that's their belief. But I should be open. Uh, I, I should be allowed to criticize, and not only their beliefs, but, I mean, I, other religions I've studied, whether it's Judaism, Christianity, mm -hmm. I find parts that I, I don't agree with. Right. If, I, if I'm critical of that, if I think that's problematic, what, why why should that be censored? Why yeah. should that not be allowed? I don't think allowed? it should be I censored. Agree. And I think everyone has, again, I'm, my whole thing is advocacy for allowing and, and tolerance and all of these things. So the same way that I think, you know, we should be tolerant towards religions of all sorts living in a country like Canada, I think we should also be tolerant of someone being okay. critical of the religions. Right. However, something like Islamophobia leads to all sorts of things. I mean... Uh, just for the sake of this conversation, in 2021 alone, in Canada, there were 1,700 reports of targeted hate crimes against individuals who represented, looked like, had had some sort of, um, you know, way of identifying themselves as Muslim. That alone, and I'm sure the same stat applies for um, Judaism, for Christianity, mm -hmm. for homophobia, for you know, all sorts of things. My or entire just conversation. Looking Middle Eastern. Well, not, I mean, I don't Muslim. know the details of the the 1700s, yeah. you know, situations, but yes, yeah, some of them, the hate crimes were because of someone wearing a hijab, for wearing, yeah, you then, know, for praying, for um, praying at a workplace, things like that, and that's not specific to Muslims. So I wanna I wanna clarify that it's okay. not specific to them. My whole thing is that Islamophobia or anti-Semitism or anything of the like leads to more hate crimes like this leads to intolerance yeah, but, and but, that's my argument but we agreed i i agree that it's it's wrong hatred towards muslim people yeah. bigotry towards muslim discrimination that's wrong that you know i uh, i completely agree with that mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm not gonna argue about this I, I what what seems to be 
um, the, where, where this is teetering on the, on the fence for me is that I can feel there is a, even if it is understandable, I'm going to say something you, you might not like or some people won't like here, here but but even if it's understandable, if example A, the woman, you, the woman mm -hmm. who comes from Iran and yeah, yeah. and therefore has a feels this this rage. aching rage towards yeah. Islam because yeah. I'm from the Islamic Republic and they fucked me for all these years, you yes. know, in my my life of growing up. It's a, there's an argument. What, what, what if somebody were to say that's I understand your emotions, but that's uneducated because you are blaming. A religion um, that even many of whom in the religion, albeit with different sects or different places or whatever, would say that that's not the example of the religion we're going to use. You know, the Islamic Republic of Iran, etc. You are blaming a religion for what this power-hungry group uh, are doing. Who, quite frankly, I don't even know how much the the, the mullahs in Iran. I don't. I mean, who am I to? I don't know how religious they really are, or, or how much this is about power and and domination, or all of you know maintaining their their superiority, etc. Um, is is it not a very, uh, as Pega said earlier, black and white position that you're taking? I I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's actually very justified that my uh, rage is towards this the core concept of islam because it allowed this government that you want to the separate from this from the relig religion to to discriminate me as a woman for all these years do you think that if islam didn't have what it has in quran written in quran i'm not making this up that women, that men are superior than, than women and women should uh, submit to men and they're not important and men can have many wives and all the stuff that the, the Iranian uh, Islamic regime is mm -hmm. using. Oh. You're saying divide the two, divide uh, the, the IRGC from Islam when it's called the Islamic Republic of Iran. It's not called the Republic of Iran. Mm -hmm. It's not a government. It's an Islamic government. But, it bases but, everything go it ahead, does. Do but do you, think, to that? do you think How do you that, respond to that? <laughs> <laughs> but do you think that, for example, if the Republic of Iran was using Christianity or Judaism or bubblegum for that matter if it was the bubblegum Republic of Iran do you think that it's it's fair to say that they would be the same shit that they are now like I, I don't think no. that I don't think but look I think I think that it emphasizes some I, of the things that they're doing don't get me wrong I, I I'm not naive to the fact that there are parts of the religion that they've used to benefit themselves absolutely but I think the Islamic Republic is more than Islam it's about corruption it's about power struggles it's about you know maintaining this uh, this supreme and power the that way, they have and everything surely else. islam is not the only organized religion in the world that has Absolutely. been used as a tool to, uh, to, as a, yeah, as a tool to oppress or to launch wars this, this or, is I, i'm sorry to say this but this is what uh this is what the argument always is against well, critic criticizing islam i i just i was very clear about saying i'm critical of other oh, <laughs> religions yeah. too uh -huh. no, you know but we can't put all religions in, in the same basket and say they're all equal right religions are different mm -hmm. and, and if you study them some of them are drastically different from, from one another right uh, so no I, I i mean look i i i think we all agree on the basic fact here it's wrong to you know hate or discriminate absolutely just a, a, an individual who happens to be Muslim, yeah. right of course that's wrong Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's horrible that that should be stopped we should even try to combat that as mm -hmm. much as we can right but uh, the notion that a lot of people in the west who have never lived in islamic countries who have never studied islam who don't know anything about the religion but they're always ready to label somebody who comes from an islamic country as being islamophobic as a traitor as as this and that just because they are critical of their former so, religion, so I think I think that's that that's that's very problematic. In the, in the current, as we wrap this up, in the in the in the current global context, in the current situation in the Middle East, um, how how do you personally? How do you all three of you? I mean, I'll start with you, Bahadur, because I know you've probably thought about this. How do you personally reconcile um, addressing? everything from human rights to what's fair and not fair, but it, it, in terms of the situation with respect to a war going on mm -hmm. with 
the sympathies of the Islamic Republic um, uh, and its involvement? Uh, well, first of all, if we're talking about Israeli-Palestinian conflict, yeah. okay, I think everybody has to approach this um, uh, by putting aside their biases, right? You approach the situation for what it is. Uh, and first of all... Sorry, you know why I'm bringing this up, right? Because this is this is why this has become a conversation of late. Right, right. Because yes. if if because if you know, and I don't think this is you know, if somebody takes a position, say you take a pro-Israel position, uh, that that person can be labeled then Islamophobic, depending on the way they present it and what they say. And on the other hand, if you take a pro-Palestinian position as an Iranian, you are siding with <laughs> with Khamenei, which is. I, Bizarre. I, see, so it's it's an interesting conundrum that I'm asking Iranians uh, how they deal. Both with. of these positions, pro-Palestinian, pro-Israeli, uh, the people who uh, identify as as such, uh, within the same camp, you can have people who are very different when it comes sure. to their belief system. Sure. So you can't really categorize somebody as Islamophobic just because they happen to support mm -hmm. Israel, and you can't. Categorize no, an Iranian no, but the, person. No, but uh, the ones who are being called Islamophobic tend to be uh, m not sympathetic, not as sympathetic to the Palestinian cause. Uh, Let's face I, it. I actually know quite a few people who hate Islam. Very, very clear mm -hmm. about this. They hate Islam, but they and they hate religion, but they're very much supportive of the Palestinian people. Okay. So uh, you know, it's it's it. You really can't you know try to like categorize people based on what political position they take. You know, and, and, and I know people who are who are Muslim. There are Muslims in the Israeli Defense Forces who are very, very religious, too. Mm. Right. So it, it, it's, it's kind of like strange for me to see people like categorize or label somebody just because they take a certain political stance. Right. Th that's that's my view. on sure, it, Right. Sure. All I'm saying, it, all I wanted to say is uh, people need to if they have a bias. Right whether it's because of religion or because of, of, of the Islamic Republic regime or whatever, put that aside and try to approach this situation by studying the history, studying uh, the facts, listening to people who are from there rather than your own experience from a country that shouldn't really get too involved in the first place, and then try to make a wise judgment mm -hmm. based on that mm -hmm. rather than being like, well, uh, you know, because the Islamic Republic uh, funds Hamas, mm -hmm. then I, I just hate... And so how it. do you do that in your personal life? In your personal view well well like i said i personally i've taken a lot of time i put a lot of effort into mm -hmm. studying the history of the conflict studying the history even prior to world war ii you know what was happening in that area what in that region going back you know a few centuries and also talking to palestinian and israeli people mm -hmm. who have lived there and i want to hear from them the same way when it comes to iran I prefer people to listen to Iranian people rather than some guy who is on Twitter trying to make money, living in Florida, just writing about it, right? Yeah, I got you. That, that's, that's the point I want to make. Rahul? Right? Um, I just, I am, uh, it's very close to what Bahadur said, what I believe. I think um, we shouldn't be labeling people because of, uh, because of the side they take. This is a political, mostly a political, I think, matter. And um, for, I personally, I'm not going to share what I, where I stand, but I, I'm for peace and I feel for both sides. And um, m my feelings towards Islam or the IRGC or whatever I've been through my life doesn't can, shouldn't label me as as an Islamophobe or or whatever uh, anti what is it um, and. Um, I don't know why. Yeah. Like, right. But I don't know why. Like can that. I can I just say I'm not sure why. Um, I mean, it's, it's not a very tasteful term, right, I guess, and, and it sounds kind of hopped up. But but I, but with that said, I'm not sure why you don't embrace the Islamophobe label. I mean, why not say, yeah, I'm Islamophobic? Because as I, I think that being an Islamophobe means you you um, partake in acts against people who ah. are who are Muslim, mm -hmm. right. and I and I don't do that. I have. I have colleagues who are Muslim. I have I have family uh, who who are Muslim, and I love them. And and mm. I don't I think really it, I don't think in, in the de well, what is the definition? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I tried to go through. I found you know Merriam Webster. I found Collins, and I, I use the dictionary dot com one. But not, n I don't think any of them said that being Islamophobic means you act out against. But but I but, but I, I hear that's, you. That's, I that's think my uh, difference. That's yeah. why I'm not calling myself right. an Islamophobe yeah, because right. I don't go on the street chanting 
go also I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm asking you that I'm not not facetiously but I'm but it's a technicality I'm asking about I I get that it's not necessarily helpful to mm-hmm. go on the internet and go hey everybody I'm an Islamophobe because it's open mm. to yeah. all kinds of interpretation they're not going to understand necessarily mm-hmm. where you're coming from which was the point of this round yeah. table, right but and that's um, no. why I think yeah. as Iranians we need to have a term for it it should be like Basiji phobic or or Arzishi phobic yeah, or Sepahi phobic. Yeah, because that's those are the individuals and entities that uh, we don't irrationally, rationally based on facts we do fear them. Yeah, and although you're them, although now you're escaping what you just you've been been arguing for the last four. No, no, I, I, I because no, you, you guys said no, it was I Islam would, that I you're know, talking about. What I was saying is what I was saying is uh, people should not conflate criticism of Islam and hatred with. For Muslim people, these are these are two separate things. Yes, we all agree that hatred and bigotry and discrimination towards Muslim people is wrong, and and of course we should. But call we that hate out. the religion they practice. No, no, I'm I, signed I, by I'm saying I know I'm saying that <laughs> I'm saying that people people should be look. I was I was a religious Muslim yeah. for most of my life, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, you're credible I, on this I, issue. I mean, you've got your own. And, I mean, you're, you're, you know, and I took the time experience. out of my interest for the religion to defend the religion. I sat down to study it more, and the more I studied, the more I learned, the more I turned away from it. Mm. That's what this, I was this, talking about This earlier. is the reality of my life, and I'm not saying other people should be like that, yeah. but I sat down, I listened to Muslim scholars. You've I done listen, your due diligence. I listened you to people who criticize yeah. Islam. I, I listened to all of them because I lived in a society where I could do that. I could, I could listen. But you also didn't, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to continue. I, I, I was going to say, you also didn't, you know, it does matter that I grew up here or in, in England and here, mm-hmm. because for me, um, I grew up in, in, especially in a time. I mean, you are now living in Toronto. Yes. I know you travel and stuff, but you're living in Toronto, in the most diverse city in the world, at a time where sensitivity around, you know, everything from microaggressions to saying the wrong thing about religion is is much higher than it ever was, mm-hmm. and where there's social media to keep everybody in check or blame people or whatever it is. Mm-hmm you know go back rewind 20 30 years ago and it really was a different um reality and for people at that point to be pointing out islamophobia would have been a godsend would have been a Mm -hmm. lifeline would have been like thank god that you know people in authority are recognizing that some of us get targeted um now whether it's because of Islam or because we're Middle Eastern or because mm. of the nose or whatever it is or the funny name or, you know, <laughs> all of those things, that's that's a little more confusing or nuanced. But, but coming from that perspective, it's been an education in recent years to get to know Iranians who've come here more recently, even mm. family of mine and, and who go, I, oh my God, who are offended by seeing a bunch of people praying. And yes. I'm going, what are you talking about? That's This is important. This is freedom. And they're like, no, no, no you don't understand because yeah, you don't. didn't grow up. You grew up here. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, this is hence our our discussion yes pega just to add to that i want to mention that you know in recent years as this education process has been happening in a place like canada and i'll use canada as an example because one we're here and two i grew up here so i can speak to that um there was a proven need to promote culture of tolerance coexistence in diverse societies to allow for that social cohesion if we don't have that we've seen that that takes us back to 30 40 years when you know for example my uncle the first time that he left iran and he went to the united states during university everyone would kick him out of class or tell him that you know you're you're a terrorist you can't come into class and things like that strictly because of the fact that well i mean it gets com- confusing because he was iranian he had a beard he looked muslim he he was a practicing muslim all of these things but again, it, it takes us back. It takes us back. Yeah, but do you know if you go back another 20 years, another 15 years, Iranians actually had a pretty good image Absolutely. in the United States. Yeah. So who, who caused that? Yeah. <laughs> again, we're, we're, we're not talking what, what, about the, the specific wh- issues around Iranians. We're talking about the term Islamophobia and whether or not there are things that aggravate that and add to it. And I think yes. as Iranians, if we're again going the back Islamic to... The Islamic Republic. Right, so that that's yeah. the culprit, but and it's and a, other other similar groups. Yes, uh, the Islamic Republic <laughs> to be continued. Per- I think we're. I just <laughs> yeah. want to add one more thing because okay. because we are talking because yeah. we are talking about the context of Iranians, and yeah. of course this is, you know, conversations to and from um, Iranians. But I just want to say that I think as Iranians, if we're truly honest 
And if we really look at this and we are truthful and we are, you know, adamant about endeavoring to bring democracy and acceptance and, um, you know, all these wonderful freedoms that we talk about to Iran, the first thing that we need to do is to go through the process of democratizing our mindsets to allow for open conversations, to allow for acceptability, yeah. to allow for advocating for equal rights, even for those that we don't necessarily of agree with. Absolutely, which I is something that Islam does not allow. <laughs> see, that's where, it, where, that's where you have to draw the line because so you see, you're talking as, and, and you do so, so righteously because you, you, you grew up here and you didn't go to a school where your teacher once came into the classroom and said, you guys, all of you guys, were made by God to serve men. And you're supposed to stay at home, and you're supposed to cook, and you're supposed not to go out there and live your lives as free people. Mm -hmm. And someone like myself, who's mm -hmm. raised in a different family, raises her hand and says, then what are you doing here? and you're kicked out of the classroom. That's enraging. Mm -hmm. And that happened in the class of religion. So we had we had religion classes, right? Kelosa mm Dini. -hmm. And uh, that's what my teacher said. So does that not is it does it not make I, it understandable? I should, I should that add I, don't I like should this? add that we, we just went through a year of the uprising. Mm -hmm. We had more than one guest come on, some a couple of them well known, compassionate, passionate, smart thinking people who said in a post-regime Iran, there should be no religion. Absolutely. Yeah. Islam should not be Islam allowed. Shouldn't be it shouldn't there. govern. It shouldn't no, no, govern. no, 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 not, not shouldn't govern. Should not shouldn't, not, shouldn't not, not separation there. of church and state. No, 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 but no church. Get rid of the religious people. Send them away. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, we had people say that. Do you know that. why they say that? Because Islam, as it is practiced in Iran and as IRGC is using it, allows for amra be ma'roof nahi az munkar, which is, I, as a Muslim, am allowed to come and tell you you're not wearing a hijab, so you will not be and allowed. And how to live and your I, life. Okay? And, like, yeah, they're not going to... If Do you think that if there was total, absolute freedom of speech and expression in Canada in here today, that all these um, radical Muslims would just be sitting around and looking at you being, oh, my God, good job, like, you're, like, you're so pretty? No. no but they're going to discriminate It's a question of where do you draw the line? I think this is a very slippery slope, and this is, this is the problem that I have with this is, and I'm not just talking about Islam. I think with anything, there has to be an understanding of... Uh, of tolerance and if we don't have that if i say you know what i don't like anybody who wears the color black and tomorrow in a free iran anyone who wears the color black we should just i don't know cast them away kill them off do whatever where do you draw the but, line then what happens to anybody who only has black clothing i don't know and this is just are the I, people I'm who, using, are, who I'm are wearing black example. with the people who are wearing black overseeing the executions but that's not what we're saying yeah listen no, but that's, like, that's but again we're saying <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know where, how to end this. You're all the best. I think Let me exercise my tolerance by saying <laughs> I love all of you. You've made great points. Did you want to make one last point? One yeah. last point uh, I want to make is uh, when I say that Islam and other religions should be open to criticism, that's not hatred. You know, so people should really, really be careful how they mm -hmm. label that. I myself have certain beliefs, certain views. They are always open to criticism. If somebody wants to criticize me, if somebody wants to tell me and wants to educate me on something that I may not know, I'm very much open to it, including Absolutely. including Islam. If you if somebody is Muslim and they've studied the religion far more than I have, I will sit down totally. and listen to them mm -hmm. when it comes to a certain political issues or anything. It's the same. All right. Bahador, I have yet to come up with a, a snazzy uh, <laughs> moniker for you, a name, but uh, it's coming. Don't you worry. And it'll have alliteration probably too. Smart Pega, Resident Raha, thank you all. Thank that, you. Uh, that's it for this week's uh, roundtable uh, and uh, to be continued next week. Actually, I, uh, on this topic, I actually want to Perhaps oh, there are ways continue. to continuing it. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know if we'll continue. Bring in some other voices yeah, to me. But there's so much topic, to talk about. So. Yeah. Um, and uh, thank you. We're going to make way for Mayor Angie Sakar to come Yay. in. So uh, thank you. Merci. Thank See you, you next thank week. You. Thank you.
This is Rook, episode 301. We are coming to you on rookmedia.com. It is there that you can link to all of our platforms, Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, CastBox, Amazon. Um, if you want to see some visuals with Rook, switch over to YouTube right now. We've actually just started putting up YouTube shorts, little video clips. Uh, and if you like your Rook descriptions and bulletins in English and in Persian, check us out on Telegram. We're also putting up uh, little clips on Instagram that we haven't been putting up before. So uh, Instagram Reels. So if you aren't following us on Instagram or or on, on YouTube, now's the time. And we really appreciate those of you who become Rook members by uh, joining us on Patreon. All you have to do is go to our, our website, rookmedia.com, press the Support Us button. I know it feels like a lot of work, but just go to the website, rookmedia.com. All you have to do is press that support us button. It takes you to a page, and there you can do a one-time donation or become a regular subscriber and Rook member. We really appreciate it. It's how we stay alive and keep things going. Rookmedia.com. I also want to mention the Kurosh, or Cyrus, I think we would say in English, International Film Festival returns to Toronto next week, the Cyrus International Film Festival. This is the ninth iteration of this film fest that is an annual celebration of contemporary Middle Eastern and Persian cinema. It's a cool idea, uh, a place to actually see a, a number of Iranian films. There aren't a lot of Iranian-focused film festivals around the world. This is one that takes place in Toronto. Like I say, it's the, the ninth year, and it's running from December 15th to 17th this year, so next week, depending on when you're listening to this. You can get all the info about the festival, the special guests attending, the films that will be showcased at ciftsift.ca, ciftsift.ca. One of the special guests this year at the Cyrus International Film Festival um, will be attending uh, and will be the uh, film producer and director, Jahangir Kosari, who will be joining me in the Rook studio for a feature interview. His new film, I Am Furuk, about Furuk Farakzad, will be premiering at this festival. Jahangir Kosari in the Rook studio coming up. He will also be part of the Cyrus Film Festival. Once again, you can go to sift, C-I-F-T dot C-A, or follow Cyrus Film Festival on Instagram. All right. My feature guest has walked into the studio, is sitting ready. My, She's a returning guest and is an icon of Iranian law and history of the last half century. Mehrangi Zakar is a prominent attorney, author, activist, and professor dedicated to advancing democracy and human rights. She was one of the first female attorneys to oppose the Islamization of gender relations following the Islamic Revolution in 1979. She held the position of Radcliffe Fellow at Harvard in 2004-2005 and was a fellow at the Carr Center for Human Rights Policy at Harvard's John F. Kennedy School of Government from 2005 to 2006. Her dedication to human rights earned her the 2004 Human Rights Award from Human Rights First and the 2002 Ludovic Trarieur International Human Rights Prize in France for her work in promoting women's human rights. And right now, Merhan Gizakar is joining me in the Rook studio. Hello. Hello. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you so much Thank you. for it's coming. My pleasure. Uh, I know when we you, we do this, uh, I speak in English. You answer however you wish in Persian okay. or in English. Okay. It's up to you. I, uh, uh, it's a, a great pleasure to have you. Thank you for mm -hmm. doing this. This month, I don't even know if you follow these things, you were just named one of the most influential women in Iranian history by Iran Wire. How, how does it feel when you receive such praise, uh, such distinctions? Do you care about them? Uh, it's it's good of course I am happy when I hear such a thing but I cannot say that I am very proud of this kind of introducing myself you don't care about awards that much I cannot say I don't care because it is a long time that I am not inside Iran. Mm. And when I am looking and watching Iran from here, 
from Canada, from the United States, or somewhere like that. I guess that now I am not the same person. I am not the same woman who they are talking about yeah. here. Sometimes I feel that I am strange for myself. You're a stranger to yourself. Yes. Yani man احساس میکنم که دیگه شاید توی مصاحبه قبلی من که به این پیری نبودم همینا رو گفتم دو سال پیش که جوان تر بودی بلاخره خیلی توی این زنها خیلی یه روزم یه روزه خب به حس من اینه که انگار اون یکی دیگه ای بوده که اینا دارن در برش حرف میزنن چون اون یکی دیگه وسط بحران بوده وسط میدون بوده حالا بهش میگن میدان خیلی میدان مد شده مم. من وقتی حس میکنم من تو میدان نیستم نمیتونم بگم که خیلی خوشحال میشم but it's part of your story دیگه it, uh, it's, it's who you, yeah. you are yeah. it's interesting though that you feel like I mean I, I imagine that you, you are definitely someone who is at the center of the Meidun, Meidon, uh, you know. <laughs> but um, but I, I, I think that's probably partly what the story of migration and immigration is, that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. someone leaves a place and feels ultimately mm-hmm. like a different person in a new country. Yeah. We're all familiar with yeah. that idea of being a stranger to ourselves because we have to adapt to a new environment. Yeah, right? yeah that's true. That's true. همه چیز عوض میشه همه چیز یعنی فقط مکان عوض نمیشه وقتی که آدم قرار میگیره توی موقعیتی که دیگه نمیتونه برگرده حتی به عنوان ویزیتور نمیتونه برگرده well, I, It's funny because I was going to say I mean I'm glad you're not in Iran mm-hmm. because you've had enough of being in prison you know and, and being, uh, but uh, and I don't suspect that they would treat you so well if you were in Iran but do you especially I want to start talking to you about the uprising of the last year in Iran mm-hmm. after the killing of mm-hmm. Masa Amini. Mm-hmm. I imagine Merangi's car over the last 15, 16 months, there have been many occasions that you wish you were in Iran. Is that true? Yeah. But this was my, you know, my wishing that I was inside Iran. In the middle of an uprising. During during that, in the Maidan. In the Maidan. (laughs) But, but, you know, something that is very important is that we have to put a name on it, 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 a name on it. Actually, this is our generation. It was not in our generation. It was not in our generation. It was not in our generation. بنابراین شاید من اگه درون ایرانم بودم مثل خیلی کسان هم نسل من ما نمیتونیم نمیتونیم ادعا بکنیم که نسل ما این پدیده رو به وجود بردن این انقلاب انقلاب یا هر چیز انقلاب ما نیست انقلاب ما انقلاب پنج و هفت بود که بمونم پوش میدم به درستی از yeah. شدت عصبانیت پنج و هفتی فلان فلان شده yeah. ما پنج و هفتی فلان فلان جده ایم این, این رو که ما از نزدیکم اگر می دیدم این انقلاب من نبود چرا؟ برای اینکه نسل من شروعش نکرد نسل در تداوم نسل من you can't embrace something that your generation ده. didn't start؟ نه در تداوم کارای نسل ما بود ولی چند نسل گذشته بود موقع بود که دیگه جمهوری اسلامی شاید خیال می کرد که خب این نسل که همه در دوران جمهوری اسلامی اصلا به دنیا اومدن right. بزرگ شدن right. و اینا, اینا رو آسونه yeah. Yeah. اینا yeah. رو آسون کنترل yeah. کردن yeah. ماها رو آسون تر بود کنترل کردن با اینکه که نسب زندگیمون دوران قبل از انقلاب بود و اون فکر میکرد دیگه اینا خیلی آسونه و اون نقطه ای که دید که این اینها درست روبروش ایستادن و اون چرا هم که میگفتن مخصوصا در سه ماه اول که دیگه اون اسمای دیگه بار نشده بود بهش و چیزای 
که بعدا مطرح شد نبود حقیقتا حقیقتا اینا زندگی ساده میخواستن نه ایدئولوژی توش بود نه اینکه میگفتن ما میخوایم کسی رهبرمون باشه yeah. نه زنده بادی yeah. میگفتن مرده باد رو میگفتن ولی زنده باد شما نشنیدین و وقتی که یک کشوری از نظر تاریخی به نظر من از زنده باد مرده باد گذر میکنه یعنی که داره میخواد برسه به یه جایی که قبلا نبود It's you know you've been through a lot you've seen a lot uh, as a as a a professor as a writer as a high profile lawyer as an activist you said at this time last year you said i've never seen anything like this before at least in the period of the islamic republic i've never seen anything like this before mm-hmm. in iran um you weren't you weren't unique in saying that a lot of people were said something similar but what was it that most surprised you or most impressed you about what was taking place in Iran uh, through the fall of 2022 Tanto chiz bud yeki huzur yek jur shujaat faqat hijab na bud shujaat berehne yani shujaati ke hich qeyd o sharti nadash az zanha zanan jawan ma didim dar in روی داد دیگر اینکه مردان جوان اینها رو حمایت میکردن در حالی که نسل من رو حتی مردانی که مرتبط با ما بودن مردان خانواده حمایت نمیکردن شاید تو خونه حمایت میکردن ولی بیرون کسی حمایتشون نمیکرد پس این یه اتفاق جدید بود در ایران یکی اینکه زنها با این شجاعت قرار بگیرن در برابر یه ایدئولوژی و دیگر اینکه مردان بیان و از اونا حمایت بکنن و هر دو جانشون در خطر باشه و اهمیت به این جان نساری ندن اینا چیزای تازه ای بود که ما میدیدیم و اون وجد و حالی که شادمانی که اینها در میدان داشتن یعنی شما در میدان نیدان های اعتراضی خب همه جور شعار میبینی میشنوی میبینی شور و پشن میبینی ولی این پشنی بود که پر از امید بود پر از yes. حب بود طبیعتا اینو به ما منتقل میکرد که از دور داشتیم نگاه میکردیم پس من به عنوان فقط یک ناظر یک کسی که نگاه میکرد به اینا خیلی راستشو بگم هم خوشحال شده بودم هم خیلی نگران شده بودم چون من این سیستم امنیتی رو میشناسم و فکر میکردم و مطمئن بودم اینکه دستور داده به معموراش که چشماتون عادت بدین که بیهجاب ببینین برای که این دستور رو داده بودن right. چشماتون عادت بدین که بیهجاب ببینین معنیش اینه که تحملش بکنین این دستور دستوریه که تا زمانی که این فشار و این قدرت روشونه ارزش داره اعتبار داره به محض اینکه دور بشیم اینا دوباره شروع میکنن ولی باید بگم که با اینکه دوباره شروع کردن تا الان که من و شما داریم با هم حرف میزنیم هرچند به نظر میاد ایران ساکته گفته میشه ساکته ولی نتونستن اون کنترلی که مورد نظرشونه با همه انواع سر میخواستم از همون همینجا رو میخواستم بپرسم از شما که وقتی که میگی که امید داشتن هممون امید داشتیم یعنی all of us around the world Iranians that's right that's right the young people of Iran gave us hope all around the world and if I can turn the question around when I say what were you most happy with or impressed with with this uprising The flip side of it is that, as you know, it's been over a year since the killing of Basa Amini and, the, and that uprising. And the general feeling now is that things have died down, things have subsided. And I don't this, think so. it's, it's not this, this time last year, there was real talk and expectation. Smart people, political scientists, activists, long-time activists were saying, dig it, tamam should. You know, within three or four months, this is over. This is, this is the revolution. 
are you disappointed at where we are at now? No. I'm not disappointed. Of course, after I you know, was facing with killing young people, young, young women, young men on the street, it was sad. But I can understand that it is not something that is over. It is now alive under the cover of Sarkoop. Vahili Monkeneke Besurate Shadi Tari Aziri in Puste Sarkoop Birum Bezane. Amo inke Kay Bachegune Hitch Kasnemitune in a bay. Vali Benazareman. زنده است برای اینکه من مثلا دختری که از ایران میاد میبینم این دختر اصلا دخ... مثل دختر من نیست که قبلا بود در همین سنین مثل دهه شستی نیست حالا اینا میگن خدای دهه اونا میگن خدای دهه شست ولی ما میگیم نسل دهه شست یعنی اون خدای انگار با این نسل قرار بوده که <تصفيق> خون و خون ریزی کنه دهه شستی یه جور دیگه بود دخترش یه جور دیگه بود پسرش یه جور دیگه بود ولی اینها جور دیگه دارن جهان رو میبینن جور دیگه دارن ما رو داوری میکنن ما رو قضاوت میکنن به نظر من ما رو به چالش میکشن نسل ما رو به چالش میکشن البته نمیگم کارشون بی عیبه از این نظر خب جوونن اون شرایط ما رو نمیدونن <تصفيق> اون تاریخ رو نمیشناسن میگن شما تن دادین شما تن دادین کار ما رو سخت کردین <تصفيق> بنابراین این اینم این چالش هم هست بین ما و اونا But if I, if I can push back and I don't push back because I, I want you to be wrong I want you to be right I want, <تصفيق> I want to believe what we were saying last year which is there's no turning back This is the, the, the train has left, left the station. This is a, a new era and, and the, the days are numbered for these uh, old men running this, uh, this, this regime. But I have to at the same time represent or, or you know, give voice to the people who are surrounding me saying things like, من الان برگشتم از تهران هیچ خبری نبود اونجا you know, there's nothing going on I don't see it. we don't see anything we don't had to um, you know the executions mm-hmm. as you know mm-hmm. are continuing in Iran yes there are executions happening for the same bullshit reasons excuse me that they were six months ago or a year ago those executions are happening and yet You know, in January of this year, same year, in January of this year, when two people were executed, the entire world knew about it. We had, I had friends and family who were saying, mm-hmm. I'm so upset about this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's happening this week when we hear about executions? That suggests that the dy- dynamics have changed and not in a positive way in terms of things dying down. How do you respond to that? من قبول ندارم که همه اینایی که از ایران میان میگن که ایران آرامه دو, دو تا نگاه داریم یه نگاه سطحی داریم یه نگاهی داریم که عمقی عمیق دیپ نگاه میکنه به اون صحنه و به ما میگه که این جمهوری اسلامی دیگه اون جمهوری اسلامی قبل از قتل محسان نمیش یعنی اون احساس صبات رو نمیکنه بسیار میترسه از مردم یعنی وقتی یه حکومتی خیلی میترسه از مردم کارای عجیب و غریب هم زیاد میکنه ولی این کارای عجیب و غریبش آخر و عاقبت به یه نقطه میرسه که اون مردم به هر حال به درجه جنون میرسن ولی ضمنا ما این هم باید یادمون باشه که در ایران یه بخشی از مردم اصلا نمیخوان ریسک کنن اون بخش از مردم 
و میدونیم چرا حق هم دارن یعنی بله. من آره. از نقد نمیخوام بکنم sure. ما تحلیل بخوایم بکنیم صحنه رو بخوایم نگاه کنیم اینا یه انقلابی پشت سر داره دارن مردمی که درون ایران زندگی میکنن که اون انقلابه جان کلی آدم رو گرفته مال کلی آدم رو گرفته شرافت کلی آدم رو گرفته کلی آدم هم وادار کرده که اصلا ایران رو ول کنن برن خب اینا تن به سادگی به ریسک نمیدن که حالا دوباره بیان وارد دیگه انقلابی بشن حالا بعدا اون انقلابیون بیان و این چیزا رو که اینا به این بدبخت شما نگاه کن الان صحنه رو توی سینما گرا نگاه کن توی اینایی که بهشون میگن سلبریتی ها نگاه کن ببینین چه جور زندگی به اینا تنگ و تلخ کردن خب خب پس از چه لحاظ شما میبینی که این حکومت الان میترسه چه uh, where, where you seeing that where are you seeing می ترسه می ترسه از همین سینما یا اگه نمی ترسید که مرجوری تیکه تیکه نمی کرد و زنشو mm. داره پیام می فرسته مسیج می فرسته که من می ترسم ازتون مجبورم گاهی تیکه تیکه تون کنه mm. حواستون رو بدی but, but Mering is John the, the point was that executing somebody for protesting for expressing their mm-hmm. their right to free speech under the human rights to, to, to the United Nations Charter of you know, basic human rights that should that kind of execution should never be normal should never be normalized should never be regular you know and that's what we were saying six months ago or that's what we were saying a year ago and yet it feels like it's become normalized again Everybody kind of rolls their eyes and goes, okay, well, you don't want to get your car calling in this regime. Or it's a valangal of shooting it normal, normal shooting as a valangal of the cheese, the jadid knees, cheesy cal on jadide, un hajmi as tavajuhi jahoni ke zano javunoy iran jalb karda, yani mardume jahon yik iran di gari rodidan as maso bebat. Yeah, mohem tarin. قدرتی که الان ایرانیا دارن این است که جهان یک ایرانی رو دیده که خامنه ای بهشون نشون نمیداده منظورم از شخص خامنه ای نیست سمبولیک میگم این قدرت برای ایران ایرانیا ایرانیان به نظر من این قدرت رو حالا علا رقم این که به سازمان ملل فش میدن نمیدونم به فلسطینیا فش میدن به قضیه یا فش میدن علا رقم همه این اکس و لملای عصبی که دارن ولی کاملا فهمیدن که اینا میتونن همین حکومت رو بترسونن و بلرزونن و همین که در جهان یک چهره دیگری از ایران نشون دادن تا قبل از این درست ما خیلی داشتیم 96 رو داشتیم 98 رو داشتیم 88 رو داشتیم به هر حال ایران آرام واقعی نبوده هیچ وقت اما این یکی چون با بدن زن شروع شده به نظر من یعنی من تصورم بر اینه که یک فمینیزم ایرانی متولد شده و این فمینیزم ایرانی برخلاف فمینیزم غربی که از دستموز شروع شده از انقلاب صنعتی شروع شده بدن مکتب فمینیزم تدوین شده بدن مارکسیزم اومد اون مکتب و یه جور دیگه ای تعریف کرد و گفت اصلا نیازی نیست به بحث حقوق زن وقتی انقلاب مارکسیستی بشه به طور طبیعی زن ها هم برابر میشن با مردم اینا همه رو این فمینیزم ایرانی رو نمیتونیم بگیم که اون تعریف رو داره فمینیزم ایرانی روی بدن زن نوشته شده و از این به بدم روی بدن زن نوشته میشه از زمان رزاشا شما بگیرین که کشف هجاب حالا اجباری غیر اجباری هر جوری که فکر کنی محور و مرکز فمینیسم در ایران بدن زنه وقتی بدن زن اومد در برابر بزرگترین دشمن بدنش نه دشمن بدنش که بعض بدنش بدش بیاد نه میگه این بدنه فقط مال اون مردیه که صاحبشه right. که اون نگاه به دین اسلام یا هر دین دیگریه که حکومت هم 
ادعا میکنه من حکومت دینیم این بدن اومد در برابر اون اوریان شد این فمینیسم به نظر من پسوند ایرانی به خودش گرفت ام. اما این پسوند ایرانی نمیگه به من دست مزد مساوی بده نمیگه به من هیچ کدوم از اینا رو نمیگه میگه من میخوام بدنم هر جور دلم میخواد نشون بدم اگه شما به کنهش بری در مکتب فمینیزم ایرانی نشون دادن بدن میشه مقدمه تمام آزادی ها و برابری های بعدش هم. چون برای مردان هیچ وقت این بدن اینقدر اهمیت اینا وقتی که میگن مردم هم نباید آسین کتاب بشن اینا بازی میکنن دروغ میگن میخوان بگن که یعنی ما مرد و زن و فرقی نمیذاریم زنهای ایرانی اصلا هم حرفای من حرفای شتاب زده نیست که فرد و براندازی میشه دموکراسی میشه من انقدر عقلم میرسه که نه دموکراسی میشه نه هیچ هیچ به این سادگی ها اونم تو این شرایط جهانی ولی در دراز مدت زنان ایرانی منطقه خاور میانه رو به نفع خودشون تغییر میدن من کاری به نوع حکومت ها ندارم شیخا و نمیدونم چیزای عربستان سعودی از این از اتفاقی که در ایران افتاد احساس خطر کردن وقتی زنایی که زیر بیشترین فشار هستند برای اینکه بدناشون پوشیده نگه دارن اینا میان برهنه میشن خب این یه الگوه برای همه اگه نگیم همه کشور مسلمان جهان چون همه این مشکل رو ندارن ولی زنای خاورمیانه دارن این الگو الگویه که شیخای عرب صاحبان چاهای نفت صاحبان حرم سراها هم نهایتا ازش تأثیر میگیرن و همین الان هم تأثیر گذاشته و شاید دارن یواش یواش میخوان اونا هم سیاستاشون رو تغییر بدن اما این تأثیر این من این اینو نمیگم انقلابی که براندازی میشه در ایران من اینو یه انقلاب اجتماعی و ذهنی و فکری میبینم که زنا شروعش کردن هرچند که مردا هم ساپورتش کردن حمایتش کردن و سخنگو شدن اون چیزی که شروین میخونه به نظر من سرود این انقلابه <تصفيق> ولی یه مرد میخونه yeah. اما این مرد این سرود جوری میخونه کلماتش همه چیزش که نسل من اصلا چنین شاعری نداشت چنین ترانه سرایی نداشت نسل من اگه میخواست از حقوقش حرف بزنه تمام محافل روشن فکری بهش میگفتن او اینم رفته با حکومت کار میکنه اینم داره با اشرف پهلوی کار میکنه و من مجبور بودم فرار کنم از اون میدان این, ت... این ت... انقلاب بزرگیه Tell me about when you talk about the um... the power, the foresight, the vision of young women in Iran, this new Iranian um, vision carved by women. Uh, talk to me about the, the dance that occurs, the sad dance that, 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 that necessarily occurs inside Iran on, on so many levels. You know, anecdotally, I was uh, on, the, on the program last month, I was saying, My cousin had just come back from Iran and, and said uh, he was walking my other cousin's dog. And I said, oh, you're, you're allowed to walk the dog? And he said, oh, no, but you give me, you know, like, which is, that's, that, that example is, it's, it, that's Iran for me. That it, from the outside, it's so hard to understand. So there's a law, but nobody accepts the law, but they know there's a law and they can be in trouble for the law, but they're going to still walk the dog. And... So we have this moment right now where you know that the regime has taken steps for new, harsher, draconian laws to enforce the hijab, the rusari, mm-hmm. the, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. And yet at the same time, friends of mine in the big cities in Iran are saying, no, 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 there's young women especially are walking around there on the subway with, without, the, without the hijab, without okay. their... So how do we make sense of that? I don't know, Hafiz, 
خوندی یا نخوندی یا میدونی یه چیزی توش هست به نام رندی این رندی رو خب خیلی ها زرنگی تعریف میکنن خیلی ها حوشیاری ولی اصلا تعریفش سخته یعنی تو یه چیزی رو که میخوای و بسیار سخته برات بیانش یک جوری اینو بیان میکنی و یک جوری اینو به مخاطبت میرسونی که رندانه است <تصفيق> یعنی او نمیتونه تو رو مثلا اگه حکومت بگیره اگه حکومت حالا حکومت هم نه البته تو حافظ همیشه از مثلا پلیس به نام گزمه نمیدونم چی چی گفته ولی این فرهنگ ما بر پایه رندی در برابر پلیس و دیکتاتوره این رندی حالا چیه؟ حالا اومدن زنا ماشیناشون رو نمیبرن بیرون برای اینکه ماشینه در خطر قرار نگیره خودشون بیجاب میرن یعنی همینطوری شیوه هاشون و تکدیکاشون و و شماها که اصلا تو ایران خیلی سال نبودی منم نبودم ولی خب بالاخره عمر گذروندم اونجا میتونم بفهمم آخه این که ماشینش میذاره پارک میکنه تو خونش میره با مترو میره حالا از این دالان وحشت هجاب بان هم ممکنه رد بشه وقتی که رد میشه رو سرش در میاره این بازی رو ما نداشتیم به این صورت این داره بازی میکنه با حکومت حکومتی که خودش بازیگره ولی این بازی رو ندیده بود در برابرش این خیلی بازی مهمیه یعنی من تو رو قبولت ندارم حتی شده با بازی کردن تو رو نفیت میکنم فرق میکنه حتی با دست هوا کردن و گفتن و مرگ بر خامنه ای حتی با اونم فرق میکنه این خیلی خیلی زیرکانه تر و عمیق تر از اون وقتی اون ادامی رو شما میگی اون پسر که یادم نیست اسمش چی بود بهش میخواستن القا میکردن که آره تو گفتی قرآن سر خاکت بس قرآن رو قبول نداری حتی دم چوبه دار رندانه گفت من گفتم شادی کنید با کلام دهاتی من گفتم شادی کنید نگفت من قرآن رو قبول ندارم اینا رندیه و این رندی وارد فرهنگ مبارزاتی ایران شده مبناش این بوده که اینا میگن سبک زندگی ما رو داشته باشم نمیخوام داشته باشم از اول انقلاب هم تو خونه ها همه کار میکردن من. بعضی وقتا میگرفتنشون بعضی وقتا نمی... اغلب نمیتونستن بگیرن ولی الان دیگه بازی علنی شده دوره یه بخشی از این جمعیت به این حکومت میگه من با تو بازی میکنم یه کاری هم نمی کنم که لزوما تو منو بگیری حتما بکشی بازی میکنم و ببینین اگه شما میگی ادام زیاده منم ما دائما راجبش می نویسیم یادتون باشه اگر این فشارای جهانی نبود اینا بعد از این داستان اعداماشون 20 برابر این بود این یه حکومت نرمال نیست ولی فشار جهانی روش اثر گذاشته فشار جهانی رو من بدون اینکه بخوام اینجا از جنسیت خودم بخوام ستایش بکنم بیشترش رو زنا به وجود آوردن و اون شیوه هایی که زنا آخی این که روسریش در میره آتیش میزنه دور روسریش میرخسین آرت یعنی این آرت انقلابیه آرت اعتراض این آرتو همه دنیا میبینه ولی این همه ما زندانی سیاسی داشتیم قبلا این همه همه دنیا ندید تا بهشون بگی میگن بابا همه دون... همه جا آدم کشی ولی هیچ کس به شما نمیگه که بابا همه جا زن رو نمیذارن که راحت و آزاد زندگی بکنن نمیگه به پس بنابراین اینجا ما یه استثنا رو تونستیم yes. به دست بیاریم yes. که دیگه تو اون کسی به ما نمیگه بابا همه جای دنیا اوکی اوکی سو اف دی گول پوست دات واز ا فانتاستیک انسر آی مین آی آی انجوید دات لرنینگ فور دی دی رندی لسن از مامان تو پرسی واز پاشه شو شو دا بی آی تینک ام اف 
if we're talking about Dakhili Iran, if we're talking about the, the goalposts moving inside Iran, let me ask you about outside of Iran and what what this uprising, both ideologically, philosophically, but in terms of global relations, has accomplished or has not accomplished. Because you you've said, by the way, that you have no hope at all that any kind of democracy or freedom can be accomplished under this regime. That you said regime uh-huh. change is necessary. Um, one of the great successes of the past year that a lot of us were saying, okay, this is great, we felt that, was that it was the death of any kind of reformist idea of working with the regime. In other words, this was the year that everybody said, okay, you know, if, if anyone had an idea that we can bargain with this regime we can and change them, or that's not going to happen, there needs to be regime change. And yet, there has been various indications that Western governments still intend to uh, work with the regime, possibly resuscitate the nuclear deal, won't put the IRGC on the terrorist list, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What, what do you make of that? I don't have an answer to that question, in terms of the women and the women. I don't have an answer to that question, for the fact that we have been working with که همه این گروه هایی که میگن ما رژیم چنج میخوایم براندازی میخوایم همهشون دارن با هم دعوا میکنن هم. وقتی که اینا همه دارن با هم دعوا میکنن بخواهیم و نخواهیم خوشمون بیاد و بدمون بیاد وقتی یه نیروی به نام نیروی رفورمیست درون ایران وجود داره که این نیرو انسجام هم داره یعنی در یه لحظه میتونه که منسجم بشه سازمان یافته بشه چون مهره هاش هستن این مهره ها دوزدم هستن یعنی این مهره ها رو نمیتونیم بگیم تایب و تایرن اینا مرتبطن با اون یکی جناح از اول انقلاب هم با هم کار کردن با هم خوردن با هم بردن همه این کار کردن اما اینا یه به هر حال کارنامه سیاسی دارن یه کارنامه سیاسی هر چه قدم بگن همشون یکیان متفاوت داره ما از زمان خاتمی گشایش در وضعیت اجتماعیمون اتفاق افتاد هرچند که بعد بستنش ولی این 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 دوران یه دوران متفاوتیه در جمهوری اسلامی و آدمای خودشو و بازیگران خودشو داشته و این بازیگران خیلی هاشون هم جوان بودن درست حالا همش میگن اسحال طلب نمیدونم چی چی همه اینا رو میگن اما ما نمیدونیم چه اتفاقی میفته وقتی که این همه نیروی براندازی که در کارج از ایران میتونه خودش رو تعریف بکنه میتونه کار بکنه همه اینا دارن همدیگر رو میزنن من نمیدونم وقتی همه اینا همدیگر رو میزنن آیا اون نیروی رفورم یک لحظه پیش میاد در تاریخ ایران که دوباره سر برکشه یا نه ولی خب خیلی ها میگن که با تا مرگ خامنه ای ما هیچی نمیتونیم بفهمیم که چه, چه اتفاقی در راهه و بعد از اونه که تازه میتونیم بفهمیم چه نیروهایی درون کشور میتونن آره سپاهو میدونیم ولی غیر از سپاه بالاخره حالا حکومت نظامی هم که بخواد باشه سپاهی هم که بخواد باشه باید یک یک نیروی سیاسی کنارش باشه ما نمیدونیم I wanna, I'm going to ask you about leadership and where, how we, where, where that fits in but I'm talking specifically about you know Can the people of, if we say that this is about self-determination for the people of Iran, let the people of Iran decide, right? Does it really matter what the people of Iran want or don't want if the West wants to keep playing ball with this regime, wants to keep enabling, supporting, doing deals with the, this regime? We know that 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 we know به هر حال در این قضایه که تو منطقه اتفاق افتاده خب داره هاشا میکنه ایران که من اون نقش جنگ افروزی رو نداشتم و 
و واقعیت اینه که این حکومت جنگ وارد جنگ نمیخواد بشه میدونه که اگه وارد جنگ بشه سقوط میکنه ولی نیابتی جنگ میکنه با اطراف خودش و به نفع خودش این جنگ نیابتی باعث بقایش شده برای اینکه قرب یک جاهایی که میخواد یه معاملاتی بکنه باز از ایران هم استفاده از جمهوری اسلامی استفاده میکنه برای کاراش برای حمله به افغانستان از ایران استفاده کرده برای حمله به عراق از ایران استفاده از جمهوری اسلامی استفاده کرده چرا؟ برای اینکه جمهوری اسلامی جنگ نمیخواد اشتباهه جمهوری اسلامی میخواد نیابتی در جنگ باشه و خودشو وصل کنه به بخشی از جهان که این بخش از جهان خب بعد از خمینی خیلی نیرو گرفته به عنوان مثلا ضد آمریکا ضد امپریالیست ولی زیر جولکی با همه اینا ارتباط داره و کار میکنه چرا نخوانش بله به نظر من تا حالا حمایتش کردن تا وقتی هم که لازمش داشته باشن حمایتش میکنن اما هیچ وقت نمیشه که اگر که نارضایتی باز از اینم بیشتر بشه که این اصلا اهمیت انگار نمیدن به نارضایتی مردم غیر ممکنه اینا بتونن راحت مدیریت کنن و همه جا اینا گرفتارن وقتی گرفتارن در کاراشون هم اشتباه زیاد میکنه همین الان شما اگه حوصله داشته باشید تیترهای خبرها رو حرفایی که اینا میزنن و خاصا اینا حرف شما میزنی اصلا انقدر میترسه مثلا یه چیزای عجیبی میگن خیلی عجیب یعنی حتی نسبت به خود جمهوری اسلامی که ما میشناسیم عجیبه <تصفيق> و تمام نشانه ترسه من نمیگم اتفاقی فردا میفته تا حمایت غرب هست ولی من میگم که حمایت غرب هم میتونه شکننده باشه چرا نباشه شکننده آره ولی من فکر میکردم اگر بشه would have happened last October or November یعنی اگر یعنی اون وقت وقتی که there's you know people on the streets in Iran people on the streets around the world putting this kind of pressure and even then in Canada in Canada we still don't have the IRGC on the terrorist list then I start to wonder when will that ever happen خب میدونی اونا که تحلیل سیاسی میکنن خیلی حرفا میزنن که تو حرفای ما نمیاد مثلا انتخابات آمریکا مثلا اینکه آقای بایدن و دموکرات ها میخوان انتخابات رو ببرن از جمهوری خواها و چون میخوان انتخابات رو ببرن از جمهوری خواها این قادر نیست اگر یک تنش دیگری در اونجا به وجود بیاد این تنش ها رو کنترل و مدیریت کنه یعنی میدونی هزار تا چیز مثل کلاف تو همدیگه فرو رفته امه. برای همینه که ما مجبور میشیم یهو فکوس کنیم رو فقط بدن زن برای اینکه میبینیم که فقط اونه که به ما اجازه میده که یه صحنه یک تصویری از ایران ببینیم که متفاوته اما اونای دیگه متفاوت نیست سوریه چه جوریه لیبی چه جوری شد همه همش مثل همه هر وقت هم بخوان اینا رو داغون کنن متا بازم همه ما نگرانیم که وقتی هم می... اگر بخوان اینا رو از میان بردارن نکنه کاری بکنن که باز وضعیت مردم ایران از این که هست بد ب... بدتر بشه right. یعنی پیچیدگیش خیلی زیاده آسون نیست حرف زدن دربارش اما آسونه که اون تحلیل های سیاسی انتخاباتی آمریکا رو هم در نظر بگیریم درباره اینکه چرا در نوامبر گذشته هیچ کاری که ما دل خواهمون بود نشد اما اینو میدونیم که مردم ایران هم امیدشون رو به سیاست مدارای غرب از دست دادن ولی به مراکز مدنی و فرهنگی و هنری غرب Well, there's there's been something that another lesson maybe of the last year that I've heard yeah. a lot of Iranians yeah. say is I mean maybe we knew this but we definitely know it is we are alone. If this is if change is going to happen, it's up to us. There's nobody who's going to come on yeah. uh, and That's, save us on a white correct. horse, and we don't want that anyway. 
let's yeah. let you know let's do this ourselves mm -hmm. meaning the iranians inside iran supported by iranians outside of iran if possible yeah right? no it, it, it just it is not the government of iran islamic republic that uh, you know give full of hate slogan against western country the people they are doing that hmm. but with two a uh, goal the government is aggressive in just in kalam just in slogan mm -hmm. with western country because they say that okay um, they uh, you know they use the uh, tahrim against us and they punished us tanbih kardan maro be khater in ke bahashun دوستی نمی کنیم و خیلی چیزا اما مردم یه جور دیگه دارن اگرسیو نسبت به غرب میگن که کمک چرا نمی کنیم به ما که اینا رو برداریم right. یعنی یه, دو یه تناقض هم اینجا به وجود اومده اما خب اینم تناقض خوبی نیست برای اینکه مردم دیگه عصبانی از غرب mm. ما اینو درست فضای مجازی جایی نیست که آدم بتونه خب حق دارن نه من منم هم میگم حق دارن ولی این تناقض تناقض عجیبیه مم. برای اینکه در این حال روی یه دونه چیزم افتاده <تصفح> ببین رو نمیدونم بگم چی روی یه خط افتاده yeah. روی یه خط دو تا گل افتاده yeah. خردوشون فش میدن به غرب یکی میگه چرا غرب منو تحریم کرده یکی میگه چرا قلب این پدر سخته ها رو بر نمیداره I've been looking forward to having this conversation about, about the idea of leadership mm -hmm. and it, it intersects with everything we've just been talking about and, and it comes from something that you said that I'm, I'm very curious to ask you about which is you did an interview on um, VOA in May in which you said we need to address the issue of leadership and direction after the regime is toppled now. We should be talking about this now. Okay. And you talked very understandably about how with the revolution of 1979, the Islamic revolution, no matter how popular it was amongst different groups on the streets, mm -hmm. there was no plan other than we have to get rid of the Shah. And it was that vacuum in a plan, there being no plan, that led the Khomeinis to co-opt the revolution and consolidate power. So let's not let that happen again. Let's have a plan, right? But isn't the debate about leadership in Iran part of the reason why the uprising has dissipated? Because as you just said a few moments ago, these different opposition groups and so-called opposition leaders are all spending time unfollowing each other on Instagram. I mean, you know, so how can we have that debate if it leads to undermining the movement the very movement to get rid of the regime خب این خب این بزرگترین مشکل فعلی ماست مشکل چند ساله ماست لیدرشپ و اینکه در اون سه ماه مثلا سه چهار ماه اول همین جریان مهسا به نظر من همه ما اشتباه می کردیم در تحلیل هامون و اطلاعات غلط به ایرانیانی که در صحنه بودن می دادیم یکی در این باره که اصلا دیگه انقلاب انقلاب لازم نیست انقلاب باید افقی باشه نتورکی باشه م. لازم نداره که مثل هرم مثلا یک کله داشته باشه فرض کن نلسون ماندلا داشته باشه یا نمیدونم یکی دیگر داشته باشه من اشتباه بود من میگم اشتباه برای اینکه نمیشه خب خودتون گفتی که this, the young people are آره, doing this آره ولی سازماندهی رو همه منتفی اعلام میکردن در حالی که ضرورت داشت که سازماندهی رو آموزش بدن در همون حالت در همون حالتی که جوش و خروش بود نگن که اصلا سازماندهی لازم نیست میگفتم سازماندهی لازم نیست سازماندهی مگه میشه لازم نباشه بدون سازماندهی اون وقت پر خب خورد به سرکوب دیگه یواش یواش تضعیف شد یواش یواش 
یه قضایی های دیگری اتفاق افتاد و میبینین که الان مثلا دارن خوا... با خانواده های اینا چی کار میکنن حالا اونا که از بین رفتن با خانواده هاش. من به نظرم میاد که از بیرون خیلی مدبرانه با این موضوع غیر از خبرای هیجانی انتشار خبرای هیجانی که خب مورد علاقه مردم طبیعی مردم عصبانی اون خبر رو دوست دارن ولی این طرف یک نیروی مسئول که بخواد یاد بده که خب حالا که تا اینجا پیش رفتین خیلی چیزا رو شما تونستین فتح بکنین حالا باید فکر سازماندهی هم بکنین این بحث رو بعدا بیون کشیدن یعنی بعد که همه چیز آرام شد یعنی سال دوم بود که دیگه اجازه داده شد از طرف مسئولین این میدیه های تأثیر گذار که یه کسانی راجع به سازماندهی حرف بزنه این یکی از اتفاقاتیه که افتاده و خوب نبوده از خارج ولی خب خارج خیلی ساپورت کرد این همه جمعیت خارج ایرانیانه که در خارج هستن واقعا سابقه نداشته که این همه جمع بشن و حمایت بکنن از یه جمع مثلا در واشنگتن میگفتم مگه این همه ایرانی بود تو واشنگتن من نمیدونستم من خیال میگردم but, but it's a paradox right yes. it's a paradox because when, when, when the only plan was let's get rid of the regime or We, we must topple the regime or the regime is evil, let's support the people of Iran. We were unified. We were globally unified. As soon as, and maybe because for, for whatever reasons, maybe there was, there was that desire, we need leaders to speak up, we need to figure this out, etc. As soon as the, the focus shifted to, well, what's the plan afterwards? Who's going to be in charge? Let's develop a man, sure. I mean, as soon as all that started, The divisions reasserted themselves. I mean, well, that's a paradox. I mean, because which one, you know, I mean, if if I understand, obviously, the point, especially by looking at 1979, um, uh, Pajo Haft, I understand the point of saying, if you have no plan, this is what happens. Yeah. You know, uh, it, 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 the, the possibility of an Islamic Republic led by Khomeini that surely millions of people in Iran didn't want, right? But, but... At the same time, if we if we are working on that plan, especially from the outside, which seems a little bizarre too, because you know uh, we're going to develop a plan outside of Iran for people inside of Iran for the next five years, uh, that we can't agree. The famous Iranian inability to agree with each other reasserts itself. We're divided. We're not. We're not we, we don't have unity. We don't. Everybody says the same thing. We did an episode on the one-year anniversary of the killing of Masa Amini. We had 15 prominent Iranians come on. Faramaz Aslani, Hila Sadi. Every every single one of them said the same thing. The lesson we learned is we need unity. Unity nadorim. Yeah, but I'm not یعنی اگر نتونسته باشه در خارج احزابی حالا در ایران نمیشه در خارج که میشده که میشده برای خودشون یه دستجاتی و بعد بیان نمایندگان این دستجات نمایندگان رسمی کنار هم بنشینن اونم زمانش نبود ببینید خیلی عجولانه بود خیلی شتاب زده بود و یه جایی که میدان رزم بود میدان رزم بود تبدیل شد به نمیدونم فکر نمیدونم اونایی که تو اون میدان بودن چه جوری فکر کردن راجع به این موضوع به نظر من اونا خیلی نگاه کردن به خارجی ها یعنی به اون مهرهایی که مثلا اومدن کفیل شدن کفیل محکومین به ادام شدن خیلی به اونا نگاه میکردن ولی خب اونا هم که زور زیادی نداشتن نمیتونستن جلوی اعدام رو بگیرن اینی که شما میگین اگر که مثلا 
چهار نفر از اینا رو که کفیلایی داشتن از ایرانیان خارج از کشور یا از خارجی ها که در مقام و پوزیشن های مهم می بودن اگه چهار تا رو جمهوری اسلامی ادام نکرده بود اون وقت این پل تبدیل می شد به یه پل ارتباطی خوب ولی این که خب این جریان لیدرشیپی که هر کسی میخواد لیدر بشه من نمیدونم در ایران چه کسی چه از اینهایی که ما میشناسیم که ادعای لیدرشیپ دارن اینا چه اندازه نیرو دارن در ایران چه اندازه طرفدار دارن در ایران ما اینا رو نمیدونیم چطوری میتونیم بفهمیم چطوری میتونیم بفهمیم مثلا در مورد خب ولی چطوری میتونیم بفهمیم خب همین دارم میپرسم خب همین درست میگی درست میگی چطوری میتونیم بفهمیم چون انقدر آمارا مغلوطه در توییتر در یکی میگه مثلا 80 درصد شاهزاده رو میخواد بله یکی میگه اون شنیدیم آره یکی خب اونو قبول خب نداریم اونو من ندارم معلومه بله. ندارم ولی نفیش هم نمی کنم حتما یه درصدی داره چرا داره؟ اونم میشه فهمید خیلی شالوده منطقی نداره شالودش عصبانیت مردمه شه. مردم ایران دیدن که پهلوی ها رو بردن و به این روز سیاه نشوندن مردم خود... اصلا خودشون کردن این کارو خیلی خوب میتونه بگه اشتباه کردن من همون اونه که قبل از انقلاب بوده رو میخوام دیگه نمیدونه که چقدر این شرایط انقدر عوض نزدیک نیم قرنه و این شاهزاده با همه اینکه میتونه آدم خوبی باشه آدم شریفی باشه خب این که نمیتونه با یه لشکر فخاشی که در خارج از کشور برای هیچ کدوم از ما چیزی باقی نذاشته یعنی من که میگم ما یعنی همه فعالا شما برو ببین الان دارن با نرگس محمدی چه کار میکنن اینجوری میخوان لیدرشیپی در ایران بگیرن میشه با یه برنده صلح نوبل هر چقدر شما ازش خوشت نیاد به عنوان همسر رضا پهلوی به اون حتاکی بکنی تو احتیاج داری به حمایت برنده جایزه صلح نوبل یعنی دارن کاری میکنن که این لیدرشیبه تبدیل میشه به یه چیز هر جمرش و ما نمیدونیم اگر اونجا بریزه به هم خیلی خوب خیلی خوب اصلا شاهزاده بیاد شاه بشه کدوم لشکر رو داره آیا این لشکر فهاش که در خارج از کشور هستن که اصلا هم نمیرن ایران اینا بهش کمک میکنن در اون ایران چه خبره تا اونجا که ما میدونیم یه درصدی ایشون حتما حتما طرفدار داره بات مرنگی جان دس از آی مین ایم گونا اسک یو بات در ناگس محمدی ان وات یو جست سید بیفور وی رپ اپ بات بات اول اف وات یو ایو جست سید از وای ایت دازنت میک سنس تو می تو تری اند فیگر اوت دی لیدرشپ اند دی پلان اتسترا بیفور the regime change uh, in, in other words mm-hmm. maybe have some process in place for there to be some form of democratic election or something afterwards but but to try and figure out i mean you're the one who was making the case that we need to figure out this leadership thing before regime change and i'm saying what exactly what you've said is the reason why that's going to be impossible i mean that's the, how is that possible because we there isn't unity around that خب این امپاسیبل شده در ش... این شرایط ولی میتونست امپاسیبل نباشه <تصفيق> چرا امپاسیبل شده <تصفيق> چرا امپاسیبل شده <تصفيق> اولا که جمهوری اسلامی سیستم امنیتیش این بوده <تصفيق> که هر کسی که تبدیل به شخصیت داشته میشده در مقام اینکه نقد بکنه حکومت حتی حالا مخالفم نمیگیم اینو بلاک کرد یعنی از بلک شخصیت استفاده که هرگاه دیده که یه کسی میتونه 20 نفر رو دورش جمع کنه اون شبکه کوچولو رو منهدم کرد پس بنابراین ما یه طرف قضیه همون خود جمهوری اسلامیه شا. که از ابتدا دونسته چجوری زیربنای رهبرسازی رو از بین ببره ولی حالا برای جمهوری اسلامی هم سخت شده چون تعداد زیاد شده 
تعداد زنایی که تو زندان زندانی سیاسی هن زیاد شده امکان این که از توی زندان حرف بزنن پیام بفرستن به خارج کی نسل ما این امکان رو داشت هم. پس بنابراین مردم ایران تونستن فشار بیارن به این حکومت اینجوری نبوده که کاملا بی اثر باشن همین که شما از توی زندان میشنوید که شما باید اینو مثبت بگیری یعنی قاعدتا باید مثبت بگیری بگی ناشی از فشارهای مردم و ناشی از اینه که کلی از پرسنل درون زندان نشکنجگرا و کلیشون مثل ما هستن من تو زندانی که بودم با این مدت کوتاه یه دفعه یه سرباز وظیفه به من که قرار بود من از یه جایی ببره به یه جای دیگه توی اوین گفت شما خیال میکنی چرا شما رو گرفتن من نگاش کردم گفتم چادرم سرم بود و اونم لباس گفتم خب من رفته بودم کنفرانس برلین گفت نه خیر شما رو گرفتن که من آینده نداشته باشم این کارمند بود سرباز بود اونجا یه دفعه تو دادگاه انقلاب آبدار باشی که چایی می آورد برای اینایی که مثلا دو دو اومده بود ریز ریز به من یه پیر مردی بود می گفت من ببخشین که من اینجا دارم کار می کنم من اف کنید خواهر با همون لسانم حرف می زد شما چند تا قند اضافی هم وردار تو سلول ممکنه که فشار خونت پایین بیفته من ایالوارم من چاره ای ندارم اینا همه رو یواشکی میگفت بنابراین خیلی دانسته های ما کمه از درون ایران حتی از درون زندان های ایران کمه بعضی از زندانی هایی که میبینین که اینا خیلی توانمند میشن بعد از چند بار که میرن زندان فضای زندان رو میشنسن میبینه فضای زندان با فضای بیرون از زندان غیر از اون چند تا آدم کش و نمیدونم شکنجگر فرقی نمیکنه همه ناراضی هن. مقتدر میشه الانم ما باید اینا رو اینا رو مثبت ارزیابی بکنیم و بگیم ناشی از فشار مردمه که زندانی از توی زندان نامه می نویسه میفرسه بیرون هیچ کارش هم نمیتونن بکنن حالا فوقش یه ما به مدت زندانش اضافه کنن خب بکنه یا با یه هنر پیشه چند لحظه حرف میزنه ام. توی تلفن با یه هنر پیشه حالی بود بر. حرف میزنه اینا اتفاقات مهمیه که افتاده چون این رژیم رژیم عجیب و غریبی بوده you رحس. think that's a good if, if you're referring to Nagas Mohammadi for example speaking with Angelina Jolie and that made a big article in Time magazine you believe that's a good thing Of course. برای اینکه میگم انگار که زندان یه جایی در شکسته این این پنجره رو کی باز کرده رژیم که باز نمیکنه این پنجره رو آخه خب یه کسی دیگه میگه که مثلا این نشون that this gives the false impression that somebody who's in jail in Iran can be talking to Hollywood celebrities and it, it doesn't it, things are not are, are a lot worse than that گاهی وقتا حق دارن چون اون ریزه کاری ها رو نمیدونن مثلا من تو زندانم زنگ میزنم با دخترم حرف میزنم این اجازه رو دارم و خارج کاری ندارم تو ایرانم اجازه دادن به من با دخترم حرف میزنم شما بغل دختر من نشستی گوشی رو میگیری میگی مهری حالت خوبه بر من این اتفاق افتاده مخصوصا الان بلبشوی تو زندان هم. هم. یعنی میتونه ناشی از همون شیوه های توی زندان و یه مقداری شلوغی و هرج و مرج باشه و نه اینکه بهش تریبون داده باشن که با اون هنر پیش حرف بزنه حالا ما کاری نداریم که بخوایم ما مثبت ارزیابی کنیم یا مثبت ارزیابی نکنیم ما میگیم اونهایی که به هر حال مدعی لیدرشیپ هستن خب اونا باید این شخصیت های برجسته رو نفیشون نکنن و سعی نکنن که اون لشکر فهاش رو تحریک بکنن که اونا همه آدمایی رو که کار میکنن درون ایران رو تضعیف کنن Like the case of Nagas Mohammadi, I mean, aside from the uh, the spat in social media about whether the, the you know, I mean, 
uh, the things that have been said about sh- should she have done the interview and what does it represent and, and who does who's this person etc um, she she's an interesting case in terms of I think the the problem for the regime because on the one hand it's I, you know, when Nagas Bahamadi won the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, maybe I maybe I was naive, you know, in, in uh, I don't know who I was asking, Hadi Khaimi or somebody we had on the show, and I said, do you think that this will mean the regime will go easier on her? And they said, are you kidding? You know, look at the case of Shirin Abadi. They don't, just because you win a Nobel Peace Prize, sometimes they go, they'll make life more difficult. And I thought, well, mm-hmm. because the, the Western, the common thinking would be, now there's more of a profile that she has, so the regime is going to be kind of careful around her, right? So on the one hand, they have been hard, you know, they haven't eased off on Nagas Mohammadi. I mean, she keeps going to the hospital, they keep re-arresting her if she's not wearing the hijab, etc. On the other hand, someone like her really does represent a problem for the regime because they don't want her free, but they also don't want her to become a cause celebre, right? Um, what what do you make of her case right now? خب همونی که شما گفتین شیرین ابادی و من که نوبل نگرفتم ما قبل از اینکه شیرین ابادی نوبل بگیره خیلی دستمون بازتر بود برای اینکه انتقاد بکنیم شیرین ابادی که بعد از نوبل تازه مشکلاتش اضافه شد و این مشکلات بعید نیست که این اتفاق اینجا هم بیفته ولی یادتون باشه که شرایط اون زمان با این زمان فرق کرده و شخصیت نرگس محمدی هم با شخصیت نسل من متفاوته از شخصیت نسل من متفاوته تجربه های زیادی در همین زندان ها به دست آورده شناختش از ضعفای رژیم توی زندان به دست اومده ما این زندان های طولانی رو تعمل نکردیم دیگه. این سیزده بار بازداشت شده دفعه های اول هم ابدا قدر قدرت نبوده خیلی ضعیف آی فلجم فلانم همه کمک کردن بردنش و آزادش کردن به تدریج این ضعفای رژیم رو به نظر من درون زندان بهش آگاه شده چیزی که برای ما اتفاق نیفتاده هم. و تن داده و تن داده و یک جا هم خب البته خوششانسی آورده که اولا شوهرش که محکوم بوده به زندان اومده از کشور بیرون و بعد این بچه ها ممنور خروج نبودن و اومدن بیرون به عنوان یه مادر میگن فکر این مادر تو زندان خیالش راحته میگه بچه هم توی کشور مترقی هن. حالا هرشان از نظر مالی در زندگی مثلا خیلی قانعی باید زندگی بکنن و این بر, بر اون میزان شجاعتش تونسته اضافه بکنه ولی اینکه حالا از زندان بیاد بیرون چی میشه چیزی که من میفهمم اینه که نرگس محمدی کوتا نمیاد این چیزی که من میفهمم از نرگست محمدی امیدوارم اشتباهه کوتا نمیاد و این به یه چیزی ختم میشه میتونه که به چیزای بدی هم ختم بشه در مورد نرگس فقط درکش میکنم که این کوتا نمیاد و باز درکش میکنم که از کشور نمیاد بیرون I'm, I, I really appreciate getting the chance to talk to you I'm هیچ, always. He's she did not do this. Not at all. No, on the on the uh, on the contrary. And you man can get there, that I'm mira. No, I really, really appreciate it. I will say, you know, even when you are speaking, there's things that, and I I want to let you speak. There's things that you say that I think, oh, I know some people in the audience are not going to like that. There's some people in the audience who are going to say we don't agree with her. You. You're not shy about giving your opinions, and you don't, you don't need to be doing that anymore. But you will, and you do. And sometimes people push back on you in social media, or they say, you know, you don't know what you're talking about, or we disagree with you, or, or I mean, if, I wish they would say we disagree with you. They say a lot worse things, as you know, sometimes. 
And I look at you and think this person has given her life to all of this stuff. She's been in prison. She's been a lawyer. She's defended other people. She's been an activist. Um, you don't need to still be doing this, you know, putting yourself out there in a way that is going to have some people uh, attacking you in social media. How do you feel about those kind of opinions and why do you keep putting yourself out there? من دیگه راستش بخواین دیگه فکر میکنم همینه که هست اهمیت اصلا نمیده ولی خب من زیادم فعال نیستم یادتون باشه دیگه من در نه سنی هستم که خیلی زیاد فعال باشم و نه با این علمان ها و چیزای جدید ارتباطی و من هنوز از کامپیوتر میترسم <تصفيق> فکر میکنم ویروس داره به منم میده <تصفيق> چون وقتی میگن ویروس میزنه میگم نکنه ویروسی چه به من But you go on to Persian media you post on Instagram I mean you're yes. active still Yes, yes. Yeah. ولی به, به نسبتی که پست میذارم یا حرف میزنم دو برابرش فش میخورم ولی <laughs> <laughs> من نمیدونم چرا این کاره میکنم <laughs> خب میتونی مثلا یه عکس خودت بذاری یا سگت بذاری آره, آره خب نه آخه فالوورم که اصلا خدا رو شو نداره <laughs> اما دیشب به یه نفر میگفتم گفتم ببین این قفل من نگو اونه نوشته بود من فقط میخوام زنده باشم زندگی کنم دیگه برای من فقط همینه سروایف میکنم ولی برای بقیه در مثلا برای دختر من هرت میشه داغون میشه میبینه اینه به خاطر مادرش دارن سکه یه پول میکنن بچه بوده اصلا بعد زمانی که ماها گرفتار شدیم اینا اثر میذاره رو ما ممکنه نظرون که ولش کن دیگه ما دو روز دیگه میمیریم ولش کن ولی روی جوانایی که میخوان کار بکنن اثر میذاره گریه میکنن اینا گاهی وقتا چرا؟ خود گریه نمیکنی؟ نه هیچ وقت گریه میکنم ولی نه از دست اینا آه. از دست اینا گریه نمیکنم برای چی گریه کنم؟ برای که آه. میفهمم یه جو یه جریانیه که اصلا نه سر داره نه تا It doesn't bother you when people don't know your history don't know oh, yes, all that you've yes, done yes. you know and, and yes, are talking angry. to you as if you're yes, just you know somebody who's... I get angry when I could understand that they don't you know take a minute just search me yeah yes of course <laughs> but you don't cry. You get angry no, when you don't, don't cry. No, I don't cry. But he says to me that you were the one who made Iran the first place. I say, what do I say? What do I say? You know, I asked the question facetiously about whether you, or, or, or I asked the question about you putting your opinions out there. But I'm so glad that you do. I'm so glad that you're here, okay, and you. I'm so I, I I'm always glad to see you and get to talk to you. Thank you for and doing me this. Too. Thank you for having me. Thank well, so much. Merci. Thanks so much, Jian Jian. همیشه خیلی خوب میتونی بعد بخشی های ما رو از ته دلمون بیرون بکشی. I will I will imagine that that's a compliment. <laughs> Merci. Zakar, live in the Rook studio. Uh, and this is full time for Rook for today. Our website for all things Rook related, rookmedia.com. R O Q E media.com. Thanks to the amazing team who put this show together each week. Super Patty Saw, Smart Pega, Savvy Roham, Bearded Omid. Talented Anahita, Methodical Kaveh, Resident Raha, and Bahadur Alas today. Thank you to all of you out there for supporting us and sharing our content. Please do subscribe if you haven't done so already on any or all of our platforms. Find us on Instagram at Rook Media. Find me on Instagram at Gian Gomeshi. And as ever, listen up. It's important. Mizun Bashi. 